Episode 1, in which Galbraith retires, is entitled Enter a Frightened Lady. I've never seen so many taxis. Do we take one? Oh, we can walk, boy. It won't take long. Is it a mystery tour, or can I ask where you're taking me? It's meant to be a surprise here, but I'm sure you can guess. Can I? The old yard still looks good. It's always a powerful building. Is this where we're going? No. It's a pity. I'd have liked that. Tonight. It's where we first met Tommy. Put in most of my service there. Never liked the new place. Daft sort of name it has the new place. New, new Scotland Yard. Well, we turn right here. This way. I should never have trusted you, Tom Evans. Well, you managed to get him here, Tom. Any trouble? I had to twist his arm. I didn't expect to meet you tonight, sir. Well, if you wouldn't come to us, we had to lay a trap for you. A surprise party. The others are waiting. This way. (laughs) Quiet, everyone, please. Your attention. Our guests have arrived. Now, first, let's welcome an old friend who is still known to many of you at the yard, ex-commander Tom Evans. And someone known to all of you, a colleague, and the reason for this get-together, Detective Superintendent Bill Galbraith. Glad you came, Bill. No. Now, we are gathered here this evening for what is called a pleasant occasion, although some of us, and I include myself, would rather it had been longer delayed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The quite untimely departure from our midst of this very good but stubborn friend. Mm-hmm. Now, I know some of you think that uh, if a little pressure is applied in the right places, oh, uh, <laughs> he might be persuaded to stay. Oh, yeah. Well, let's try. Do we have his file, his record? Here it is, sir. Straight from criminal records with all the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, are we all ready? Well, stand up, Bill. Let him see you. <clears throat> Full name, William Galbraith, also known at the yard as Billy the One, Billy Boy, the Quiet One, and known to certain villains as that big rosser from the squad, <laughs> and certain other names I needn't repeat. <laughs> Born Edinburgh, 51135, which makes him much too young to be leaving us. He's only a lad, sir. They say he looks older <laughs> in the dark. Joined the force at 19. Now, the villainous details. Height six foot one, weight thirteen stone. Eyes brown, hair brown. Marks and scars various. And uh, no doubt he'll show them when he's had a drink. (laughs) (laughs) Give him a drink then, eh? (laughs) Came down to the smoke to serve us as a rookie. Then as aide to CID. Detective constable, detective sergeant, detective inspector. And now he's detective superintendent. Earned five commendations. Well, if that isn't grounds for suspicion, (coughs) has served us in CID, Flying Squad, Murder Squad, Special Crime Squad. More recently in Criminal Records, Fingerprint Branch, Forensic and Interpol. Then he slipped into Criminal Intelligence, took a look at our files and wants to leave. What should we do with him? Nicky, run the license. (laughs) I've given you a list of his aliases. Now we come to his criminal friends and associates. A formidable list. I'll pass it round and ask you, should he be allowed to leave? No! No. Now, come on, Bill, you've heard them. We'd like you to change your mind. You still have time. You have ten seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five seconds, four, three, two, one. You're out. Hey, someone's nicked a present, sir. (laughs) 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 Present from the flying squad, Bill, with our best wishes. Thanks, Jack. From D Division, sir, hoping you won't forget us. Thanks, sir. From Central, sir. We believe you mentioned gardening. Did I? Uh, Thanks, Jean. And uh, now, Bill, the official one from the yard, with the Commissioner's compliments. We are sorry you're leaving us. Thank you, sir. Speech! 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 Come on, speech! I look like a Christmas tree. (laughs) Put it down, then. (laughs) Well, uh, I don't know what to say. Uh, If I said I was sorry to be leaving, it would be too late, and you would take it as a misleading statement. (laughs) At this moment, I am sorry to be leaving so many good friends. We've been through lots of trouble and lots of excitement together, but this moment, 
will pass. This copper is really getting out of it. So, I will read this book, drink from this silver tankard, use this lovely watch to mark the passage of time, my own time, free time. I'll do all this on some sunny beach, and I'll think of you as you patrol the darkened streets of London, nick villains, find fingerprints, send things to the lab, pore over your records, type charge sheets, practice at the shooting range, and keep the Queen's peace. For me, my peace will be my own while I'm still young enough to enjoy it. Thank you all. It's all over, Bill. Yes. It wasn't too bad, was it? A lot of fuss. And a lot of loot. And a lot of friends. It isn't often one of the bright lads leaves them. I mean, this dinner was to mark the occasion, you see. Have some more coffee. Yes, yes, black as it comes. I'll say this, Tom. It was a marvellous dinner. It was almost worth resigning for. Oh, well, they thought they could get you to stay? Never. Well, to your new life, Bill. To a quiet life. So you're still refusing my offer? Uh, it's a generous offer, Tom, and I appreciate it. But you heard what I said to the lads. I'm finished with being a copper. I want quiet evenings at my own local, or I don't have to drink with villains. Half the villains in London will be celebrating tonight. <laughs> Maybe. What now? Victoria, I'm going down to the country. Oh, I'll give you a lift. Oh, thanks. Oh, I'll have to stop off at my office for a moment. Do you mind? No. There's something I want to show you. Is this what you want to show me? Your office? What do you think of it? It's big. It's impressive. Oh, you should see the rest of the setup. <laughs> we have two floors here. The biggest private investigation service in London. The busiest in Europe. Have a drink? Scotch? Thanks. Hey, hey, go easy with it, Tom. I'm on my way home with precious gifts. Oh, park them over there. And say when. More soda. Here you are. Ta. That offer I made you, Bill. You could have had this office. No, thanks. It has a desk. Oh, you could take over from me. Run the place. I've given my answer, Tom, to the commander and to you. Now, don't press it. I yes. just wanted to make it clear to you, with your experience, leaving the force is a waste. You left the force? Well, I didn't run off and leave my experience to rot. I set up this place. It's successful. It's busy. It's exciting. It's lucrative. And it does a great deal of good. I built it on my experience. I'm impressed. But you made commander before you left. All I made was superintendent. At your age, I wasn't even superintendent. I mean, you could have made commander? Was it because they didn't give you the murder squad? I was offered it. I was on the list. But instead, they pulled me inside and made me push paper around. A chip on your shoulder? No. I think there is. I trained you, remember? I always knew you were a loner. They forgot. That's all. It was still pushing paper for two years. But what paper? I mean, you know more about the yard, more about criminals. No more faces than anyone I know. Is that what you want to buy? For the public good? I don't preach, Tom. The answer's still no. And you said you wouldn't press it. Cheers. Cheers. What time is it? Oh, you still have some time. I want one little piece of advice before you disappear for that holiday in the sun. It's a case that's worrying us. Uh, will you listen? I'm a very good listener. Two days ago, I had a visitor, a young woman, very pretty, very capable. She said she had information that would be useful to one of my clients. She wanted to sell this information for a rather large sum of money. Now, in the time that I got in touch with my client and had authority to trade with her, she had changed her mind. Women do change their minds. You know, I think it was criminal information, Bill, and I think she was frightened. And she didn't look the kind to frighten easily. Now, it's your kind of case. A pretty girl, a reluctant witness. Witness to what? Oh, I don't know. 
But you know who the client is. I'm asking you to do me one favour, Bill. I would like you to see her and make her change her mind again. Find out what sort of information she has for sale. One day's work. I'll pay you well. It's time I went home. Cheers. Now, where's my loot? My tankard, my watch. Where's my book? Well, the one on gardening? I happened to mention that I might do some gardening. Well, in London? My sister Mary has a house in the country, old-fashioned place with a big garden. She needs some help. Oh, the book's on the chair. Oh, thanks. And thanks for the drink. Hello? Who is it? Yes, this is Miss Galbraith. Yes, this is Mary. Oh, it's you, Mr. Evans. It's nice to hear from you again. No, uh, Bill's out at the moment. Yes, I, I think he's liking it. Since it's you, Tommy, he's down at the local, making some new friends. Yes, he seems happy enough. He says he's enjoying it. Do you want him to phone you? Yes, I'll take a note. Just a moment. I'm ready now. I've got that, yes. And I don't give him the note until you've phoned him. I expected him back quarter of an hour ago. His lunch is in the oven. Do I tell him you phoned? I don't. Yes, yes, I'll do that. Goodbye, Tommy. Is that you, Bill? Yes, yes, I'm home. Won't be a minute. I'm sorry I'm late, dear. Have you ever been early? Your lunch has been in the oven for a quarter of an hour. Ah, not to worry. I've spent my life eating in pubs and canteens. Your cooking is a treat. Then wash your hands. Yeah, sure. I like the local, Mary. So it seems. Met a couple of lads down there. They say they know you. One called Ted Dax and the other Jimmy Sprague. You would. Ted Dax is a scoundrel and Jimmy Sprague is our local poacher. <laughs> but just as well you told no one I was a copper. You warned me often enough. I'll dry your hands and sit over. <sighs> what is it? Cottage pie. I love your cottage pie. Then tuck into it. I had a look at that shelf in the hall. Yes? It needs fixing. You fixed it yesterday. It needs fixing again. Your carpentry is about as good as your gardening. <laughs> now just wait till I've read that book. You'll have a master gardener on your hands. I've never seen you so happy. Is that bad? I don't know. Well, the pie's good. Then be quiet and eat it. That's the phone. I think you should answer it. It'll be your friend again. Again? What friend? Just answer the phone. <clears throat> Galbraith here. Who is it? Oh, it's Tom Evans. How's the gardening going? Great. Learned it all in three days, have you? Well, why not? All you need is gum boots and a spade. That's not what I heard when I phoned you were down in the pub. Well, that's right. Bill, that woman I talked about. You never give up, Tommy. Not when I think it's important, and I think this is very important. Will you see her? No. Well, do me this favour then, Bill. Will you think about it? I'll think about it. Is that all? Yes. Bye, Tom. Oh, dear. Was it Mr. Evans? Yes, said he phoned when I was out. What have you two been up to? Are you going to help him? I'm going to finish my lunch. I thought he was your friend. He is. He was the nicest boss you ever had. <laughs> I always thought you had a crush on him. Oh, be quiet. Oh, he just is always thoughtful. He's a gentleman. Tom is uh, very good with the soft talk. 
Well, as Welsh, you see. Thinks he can talk bird off a tree. <laughs> then why don't you come down out of the tree and help him? Because I like being lazy. I don't believe it. You like being busy. Do you really like it here? I like your cooking. He left an address for you. He's the most persistent man I know. And he left a name, Miss Lowens. He wants you to help him. Why don't you go and see her? I'm outnumbered. He's enlisted my sister. Miss Lowens? Yes. My name's Galbraith. I'm from Mr. Evans. You'd, uh, you'd better come in. <clears throat> Why did he send you here? He asked if I would talk with you. He says you have information for one of his clients. I have no information for him. Well, he says you have, and you changed your mind. Can you tell me why? I changed my mind, Mr. Galbraith, because I don't wish to get involved. You have a very nice flat, Miss Lawrence. Thank you. He thinks you're frightened. He says you thought the information would be worth money. And you've come to offer me money? I've come to have a talk with you. Oh, well, you'd better sit down. It's, it's silly for us both to stand. Mary Galbraith speaking. Who is it? Well, it's Tommy Evans. Uh, did you do what I asked, Mary? Yes. How did he take it? He's gone to see Miss Lowens. Oh, well, that's a start. I need his help. Tell me, Mary, is he really enjoying being in the country? I'm not sure. Well, you know your brother better than anyone else. He can be very stubborn, as you know. But he has gone to see her. If he's interested, I think he'll help you. He will be interested. Coffee. Do you take cream, Mr. Galbraith? No, and no sugar. Do you work for Mr. Evans? No. Why did he send you to me? He's interested in his clients, Miss Lawrence, and he believes you have information about one of them. Can you tell me what it is? I've told you. I don't want to get involved in it. Then just give me enough of the story to make a report to him, to satisfy him that you have nothing to offer. He can be a very persistent man. If I told you anything, I'd need protection. You'd be protected. I don't think he could protect me. Who is the client? Didn't Mr. Evans tell you? No. He's a Dutchman. Very wealthy. A diamond dealer. And what's your interest in him? A friend of mine was his courier. Courier? Mm, the man who carries the diamonds from here to there, from the diamond buyers to the office, from London to Amsterdam and so on. Uh -huh. My friend is missing. He's dead, but no one will believe me. Well, perhaps I will. Who was this friend? His name was Robert Spence. Four weeks ago, I was to meet him in Amsterdam. He didn't turn up, was reported missing. He was carrying diamonds that day from London. He ran off with them? No. Later, a body was taken from the sea near Narden, the body of a young man aged about 28, Robert's age. The paper said that the clothing and all identity marks had been removed, so I went to the mortuary at Narden. The body was... Well, um, it had been in the water, you understand. The face had been eaten, but I, I knew it was Robert. The police wouldn't believe me. Is this the information you had for sale? No. Why wouldn't the police believe you? Oh, they wrote it down, thanked me, and, and then they announced later that they could make no identification. A person unknown. Now Mr. Gelder is in danger. Mr. Gelder? The diamond dealer, Robert's employer, Mr. Evans' client. His life is now in danger? In three or four days' time. And you changed your mind about telling this? Yes, Mr. Galbraith. I've been told that it's a question of his life or mine. What would you do? Oh, come in, come in. How nice to see you, Mr. Gelder. I didn't know you were in London. Oh, it's just a flying visit, Mr. Evans. I haven't much time. Came over to do some business. I'm due back in Amsterdam tonight. 
Well, sit down, please. Thank you. Now then, what can I do for you? Well, I told you the trouble about Robert Spence. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, has there been any news? Not yet. I was wondering, until I can get a new courier, could you arrange to have a parcel collected for me here and delivered to my office in Amsterdam? Of course. It would be a great help. Here is the address of the dealers, Hatton Garden, and here is the letter of authority. Thank you. Could it be done today? Uh, yes. Well, I think that's all. I'm now due at the airport in less than an hour, and so many things to be done. Well, there's uh, just one thing, Mr. Geldar. Yes? Uh, the woman I phoned you about, a Miss Lowens. Yes? I have someone seeing her today, talking to her at this moment. You let me have a report? Oh, yes. Well, very well, Miss. Mr. Evans, goodbye. You say this Mr. Gelder is in danger. In very great danger. In three or four days' time. Are you saying that the rest of the information is for sale? No. If I told you, I would be in danger. You could be protected. Not by you. From whom? If I told you that, I'd have to get away. Far away. To get away, I'd need money. I have none. Hmm. <clears throat> Do you mind if I look around your flat? No. Why? Well, you talk about murder. You need money. I must know who I'm talking to. Well, all right. Look around. Can I look in this bureau? You'll find my passport in the right-hand drawer. A British passport? I'm a British subject. I was born in London. My father was Dutch. My mother's English. And the passport says you spend most of your time abroad? Yes. South of France, Belgium, Holland. You returned from Holland a week ago. Yes, when the Dutch police refused to identify Robert's body. A person unknown. Anne-Marie Lowens, unmarried, British subject, born London, age 27. Height, five foot eight. Hair blonde, eyes grey. That's rather a good photograph of you. Thank you. Now, what else have we here? You behave like a policeman. Would you know? You have no right to search. When you talk about murder and a man being in danger, I have a very good right. A bank book. That's private. You're not very well off, are you? I told you, if I had money of my own, I wouldn't be here. Is that why you went to Mr Evans? Yes. And then changed your mind? A photograph. Who is this? Uh, well, that's Robert Spence. A handsome young lad. You say he's dead? Yes. The diamond courier. How friendly were you? What do you mean? Were you in love with him? Well, were you? No. How long had you known him? About a year. Where did you meet him? Look, I don't have to answer these questions. Telling me where you met him can't put you in danger. And Mr. Gelder is the one who's in danger. How much would it be worth to him? We'll talk about money later. Tell me about this lad. Well, Robert was a language student. I met him in France. He liked travelling. He liked Europe. Then he got this job with Mr. Gelder carrying diamonds. Did you get him this job? Yes. I know Andre Gelder, and I got <clears throat> Robert the job because he wanted to travel. We were friends. I was to meet him in Amsterdam that day. There's someone else involved? I'm saying no more. Now, stop searching my flat and please get out. My, you do keep a lot of photographs. I... Who is this one? Now, you must know who he is. You're in the photograph with him. And this one. Who? Is this what you were trying to sell? Now I know why you're frightened. May I use your phone? Could I stop you? No. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Evans, please. This is Galbraith. Tommy? Uh, yes, Bill. Where are you? I'm with your friend, Miss Lowens. She's offering a name I already know and expecting you to pay for it. Always hard on informants. How much is he asking? He asks how much? 
Mr. Gelder has more than one enemy. We all have more than one enemy. We don't usually pay for their names. Well, to get far away from here, to be safe... How I'm... much? Well, I'd need £10,000. She says £10,000. You say you know the name. Is it worth that much? I'm asking if you're prepared to pay for it. You have authority to offer up to 10000 Thanks. What did he say? He says you are not in a position to bargain, Miss Lawrence. Now, who is this man? You said you knew him. I know him. What name did he give? David Cater. That's correct. You have several snaps of him, and they suggest you know him very well. Walking on a beach with him, together on the steps of an hotel, together on the river, together... This one, where? Corsica, two years ago. They were all taken two years ago. This man is a criminal. Do you know that? I didn't when I met him. I do now. If you know him, then you'll realise Andre Gelder is in danger, and so am I. Yes. Where is Cater? I don't know. You said in three or four days you do know where he is. No. <clears throat> where did you meet him? In France. When? Two years ago. W when those snaps were taken. Well, at the time he was... I think the nice word is pursuing a friend of mine. She's the widow of another diamond dealer. David was spending her money. Now he knows all her friends, knows about Andre Gelder, and he knows about diamonds. Did you tell him about the diamonds? Yes. Did he kill Robert Spence? I don't know. I know he will kill Mr Gelder, but there are others in it too. When did you last see him? The day Robert was missing. When I went to the mortuary and knew it was Robert, I, I was frightened. I returned to London. I haven't seen him since. You are a friend of Cater's. You got Robert Spence a job with Mr. Gelder. You met Cater the day the lad was killed. You are involved in this. No. I've told you all I know. <clears throat> Who is Cater's friend, this widow? Elizabeth Van Druten. Mr. Galbraith, I have no money. You can talk to Mr. Evans. I don't pay for this kind of information. Goodbye, Miss Lawrence. David will kill me. You'll be paid. Come in, Bill. You saw her? Yes, I saw Miss Lawrence. I also saw her passport, her bank book, and photographs of her friends. Who is she? Anne-Marie Lowens, British subject, aged 27, and has a posh flat and she's broke. How much did you offer her? Nothing. You were always rough with them. I never raised my voice. So what did you learn? That your client is named Andre Gelder. Four weeks ago, his courier went missing. Robert Spence? Yes. She says Spence was murdered. She identified him in a mortuary. Says your Mr. Gelder is next for the chop in about four days' time. Do you believe her? I believe her, but I don't trust her. I think she was involved in it. Now she's frightened, needs money, and wants to run off. You said you had a name? David Cater. There's a file on him at the yard as thick as a Bible. And the story she told me rings true. She says Cater is a charming man. He is. He's a charming swindler, and when necessary, he's a very violent man. He learned about your client through a widow he was fleecing. Ask your client if he knows a widow named Elizabeth Van Druten. Elizabeth Van Druten. Right, I'll do that. Do you, uh, do you know this man, Cater? Yes. I was after him two years ago. He disappeared, and that fits her story, too. She met him about two years ago in France when he was swindling this wealthy widow. Now he's interested in your client and in his diamonds. Are you interested in uh, Cater? No. But you know him. Will you, will you take the case? I'm finished with villains, Tommy. I'm now for the quiet life. But I've softened Miss Lawrence for you. See her and offer her some money. And don't pay her yet, or she'll run off. All right. And before you see her, check with the police in Amsterdam about a body taken from the water four weeks ago. You say Andre Gelder is in danger? If Cater is involved, yes. Oh, there's one thing you can do for me, Bill, while you're in town. Andre Gelder was here today. He's gone back to Amsterdam. There's a package to be collected from Hatton Gardens. <laughs> I'm not a messenger, Tommy. It's rather a valuable parcel. 
I mean, if I've got all this checking to do, I mean, it would be very helpful. I think I'm being conned. No, no. I mean, look, here, here's the address. Here's the letter of authority. I'll phone and arrange it. Now, will you? Life is full of favours. Don't forget Miss Lowens. I won't. You ask for Mr. Cornell. Ah, come in, Mr. Galbraith. You've uh, come to collect the parcel? Yes, Mr. Cornell. Here is my letter of authority. And uh, here is the parcel, Mr. Galbraith. It's quite small. Hmm, but uh, highly valuable. How much is it worth? This parcel? I, uh, I take it you read the letter of authority? Uh, 70,000 pounds. In uncut stone? Yes. I always like to know what I'm carrying. Could I see an uncut stone? Certainly. I'm told they look like trash, like pebbles. <laughs> not quite, Mr. Galbraith. Uh, not when you know them. If you'll come over to the window, I'll uh, show you one. Now, this one. Take it. Hold it up to the light. Now, look. Look closely at it. It feels heavy. Mm, heavy for their size, a characteristic. How much would this one be worth? Precisely nothing. No more than the price of cutting it. That is alluvial quartz. Uh, As you uh, said, a pebble. Now just keep hold of it and I'll, I'll show you some, some real uncut diamonds. You don't take much care of them. <laughs> that may seem so, but it would be quite wrong. Our security is very good, but this is how we handle them in the trade. Wrapped in paper. We call them parcels. Very small parcels, but uh, rather valuable. And this is how we offer them to the buyers. A selection. A few large uncut stones. Uh, some smaller ones, some whites, some blue whites, and some of what we call coloured the buyer, if he buys, must take the parcel, a fair proportion of all the grades. Now, here we have two very good stones, two blue whites, the queen of the diamonds, one of 30 carats, one of 20. Handle them, Mr. Galbraith. Look at them. Fascinating, aren't they? Yes, they certainly are. Yes. Now, hold them up to the light. Compare them with your pebble. Yes, yes, now I see the difference. Look at this one. Seven carats, and it has just the suggestion of a smoky tinge. I thought all the best diamonds were white. Ah, in some, a hint of colour is most desirable, but the blue-white is always the queen. Are you interested? Yes. Oh, we have some buyers in today. Come, I'll uh, show you how we sell them. This way. Mm, it's like a library. This is what we call the uh, sighting room. Some tables, a good light at each table. But there's no hurry when you're buying a fortune. That one over there, he's taking his time. Yes, he's one of our biggest buyers and one of the most expert. He's been sitting there since morning. Before he buys his parcel, he will know every stone how it will cut, how much he can sell it for. In the end, he will spend £100,000, and he will simply wrap the paper around them, put them in his pocket, and go back to Germany. <laughs> yes, a strange world, isn't it? With so much money about, I could watch it for hours. <laughs> Yep. David, it's Anne-Marie. <laughs> Hello, Anne-Marie. Where are you? Amsterdam? Never mind where I am. I've something to tell you. Something's gone wrong. You're in trouble. What's gone wrong? I'm just warning you. What's gone wrong? Well, there's a man who says he knows you. Galbraith. Galbraith? Mm. Yes. He knows me. Where is he? In London. He came to see me. Found a photograph of you. David, you must call it off. <laughs> no chance, my darling. It's the biggest touch we ever had, and it's ready to go. If he's in London, you've nothing to worry about. When do I see you in Amsterdam? You don't. Anne-Marie? Yes? 
You will be on tonight's plane. No, David. You will be on that plane. Anne-Marie. Well, Mr. Galbraith, have you seen enough? Yes, thanks. Now you know what you are carrying. I'd like to see some cut stones. No, we we don't deal in cut stones, but um, I can show you some. Uh-huh. Ah, here we are. We keep these simply as samples of the styles of cut. Now, here is a beautiful example. Cut for a pendant like living fire. Compare it with the uncut stone. It's very beautiful. Yes. Diamonds are indestructible and beautiful. Look, look how that light is trapped. To a woman, that is nirvana. And to the criminal. As you say, and to a criminal. A fortune in the palm of your hand, a greater fortune in a small parcel in your pocket. Indestructible. Easy to smuggle, never lose their value. And men have died for them. I'm afraid so. Yes. Did you have any trouble, Bill? No, here it is. A fortune in my pocket. Seventy thousand pounds worth, they said. Correct. But it's just a drop in the ocean to Andre Gelder. He has a safe loaded with them. They're just items of trade. Oh, well, Miss Allen, will you ask Mr. Milne to come in, please? And who is Mr. Milne? Oh, you'll meet him in a moment. He's the lad who's going to take this parcel to the continent. To face David Cater? Well, I hope not. Come in. Come in, Jack. Meet uh, Bill Galbraith. Pleased to meet you, sir. Hello. Now, this is the parcel you'll be taking. Oh, uh, just hold on a moment, will you? And I'll get your travel papers. Won't be a minute. Heard a lot about you, sir. You're quite a legend. My father often talks about you. Your father? About me? Is she in the force? Oh, wait a minute. Frank Milne? Yes, sir. Chief Inspector Frank Milne. Or ex-Chief Inspector. Retired, sir. Yes, we worked together in the flying squad. Didn't you fancy the force? Oh, I did, sir. But Mr Evans offered to train me. Same sort of job. More freedom. My father advised it. And now you're taking this parcel to Amsterdam? Yes, sir. Do you know what happened to the last courier? He pushed off with the goods, sir, so I'm told. No, he was killed, found floating in the sea. Then I'll just have to be careful. You don't mind? No, sir. There you are, Jack. Now then. The air tickets, travel papers, expenses and the parcel. I'll sign for it here, will you? Yes, sir. Now you do the job just as you've been briefed and it shall go smoothly. Any trouble for Mr Gelder's office? Yes, sir. Off with you. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Galbraith. Good night. Are you sending him? Oh, he's a good lad. He's well trained, and he's paid to take the risk. He has no experience of men like David Cater. And you have? Why don't you shadow him? I knew I was being conned. You are not being conned, Bill. At least not more than you've done in the same circumstances. If you think he's in danger... I know he's in danger. Then follow him. And just keep him in sight, see? All right. But I'm not doing it for you, Tom. I'm doing it for Frank Milne and for his lad. And I remember this. Good. Now, here are your hair tickets. Your expenses. You'll find them generous. There's a car booked for you on the other side. And here's a credit card in case you want a holiday when it's all over. It was all fixed, wasn't it? All very smooth. Your sister doesn't expect you home tonight. One thing you have overlooked. My passport's at home. We even thought of that. <laughs> and if I spot Cater? Well, you'll know what to do. Mm. Bill. Yes? Thanks. They A.R. Flug 147 from London is made on for Coleman. DEA Flight 147 has now arrived from London.
Ja, meneer, kan ik helpen? My name is Galbraith from London. I understand I have a card to collect. Yes, sir. Just a moment. Uh, here's your card, sir, with the car number. Here are the car keys. Well, I will take you to the car park. I hope you have a pleasant stay in Amsterdam. Thank you. I'm sure I will. This way, sir. I believe it's a blue Renault. If I may see the number on the card, sir. Ah, here it is. A friend of mine came through a minute ago, collecting a Volvo. Is he still here? A young man with a brown dispatch case? Yes. Uh, his hire car is still here, sir. That one over there. Do you know where he is? No, sir. But I saw him go towards the car. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Breath in Amsterdam here. Put me through to Mr. Evans quickly. Evans speaking. Tom, this is Bill Galbraith in Amsterdam. That number you gave me for Milne's car, the Volvo, was it correct? Yes. The car's still here, but he's gone. It's vanished. What happened? I followed him from the plane to the airport, saw him go to the car hire desk. I gave him one minute to get ahead of me. The car door is open like he was about to get in. Scuff marks on the gravel. No signs of a struggle. No witnesses, Tom. In a busy car park at an airport. No one saw it. But he's vanished. Your friend Cater? It's his style. Make a report. You make the report. I'm going to find Jack Mill. <laughs> That was the first episode of Galbraith and the King of Diamonds. The name part of Galbraith is played by Bernard Hepton and his friend Evans by Richard Davis. Gelder is played by Peter Dinley, Milne by Bruce Alexander, and Mary Galbraith by Catherine Page. Hector Ross played Cornell and the Commander. The Frightened Lady, Anne-Marie Lowens, is played by Eva Haddon and David Cater by Tom Watson. Galbraith is written by Robert Barr and produced by John Browell. Robert Barr's Galbraith and the King of Diamonds, a serial in six episodes, with Bernard Hepton, Tom Watson, Peter Dinley, Cyril Shapps, and Eva Hatton. Episode two, Dutch Treat, in which Galbraith meets the King of Diamonds. My name is Galbraith, ex-detective superintendent. Ex, because I resigned from Scotland Yard to seek the quiet life, while I'm still young enough to enjoy my freedom. But I was inveigled by an old colleague, Tommy Evans, into seeing a very pretty girl, 
Anne-Marie Lowens, who had some information about a criminal I had known, David Cater. Now, that's the trouble with police work. You're always seeing someone who knows something about someone else. She also knew about a diamond dealer named Andre Gelder, and she thought Cater was going to kill him. I didn't trust Miss Lowens, and I was inveigled again by Tommy Evans into doing one last job for him, following a diamond courier on a journey from London to Amsterdam. I was very reluctant, but I said I'd do it because the young courier, Jack Milne, was a friend of mine. Or to be precise, his old man was a friend of mine. We'd served together at the yard. In Amsterdam, Jack Milne and the diamonds disappeared into thin air at the airport. A missing friend, a strange town. So... Yeah, Benir. Do you speak English? Yes, sir. My name's Galbraith. I'd like to see Commissaris Lindemans. Is he expecting you, sir? Uh, tell me, is the Commissaris still in charge of the Interpol Bureau? Yes, sir. Then tell him Bill Galbraith would like to see him. From London. One moment, sir. Uh, Commissaris, daar is een meneer Galbraith wil je zien. Van London. Ja, meneer. The commissaris will see you now. It's the last office along the corridor, sir. Room number six. Thank you. Come in. Good morning, Kurt. Ah, come in, Bill. How oh, good to see you. <laughs> what brings you to Amsterdam? A holiday. A holiday? Oh, <laughs> Then you'll have lunch with me. I'll show you the town. Uh, sit down, my friend. <clears throat> when did you arrive? First, are you still in charge of Interpol here? Yes. Then I want some help from you, Kurt. In the line of duty? At the moment, it's private business. I'll explain why over lunch. I arrived in your country this morning at Schiphol. I came with a friend. At the airport, he disappeared. Oh, a policeman loses a friend? Well, it's easy to lose friends at an airport. You want him found, eh? Huh? Uh, it isn't quite as simple as that. I was just behind him, no more than a minute. He was going to the car park. Now, when I got there, he had gone. His car was still there. Oh. Do you know an English criminal named David Cater? Uh, no. I believe he's in Holland. Look at this photograph. Perhaps you know him under some other name. No, we've nothing on him. Have you anything on a girl named Anne-Marie Lowens? Lowens? Age 27, very pretty, blonde, about five foot seven. The name rings a bell. I could look it up in uh, records. Uh, would you like some coffee while you wait? Uh, it would spoil our lunch. Of course. It'll take a few minutes... Uh, make yourself at home, Bill. Anne-Marie Lowens and uh, David Cater. Who is it? Cater. Uh, come in, David. I've been waiting for you. How did it go? Uh, no trouble. <sighs> the airport was busy. Big planes coming in. No one heard and no one saw. Yeah. You got him here? Over there in the office. Restrained, like uh, tied up. Uh, we searched him. He had a passport, some letters and some money. He had the packet? Well, of course he had the packet and a passport. He's a new one. His name's Milne. And some letters. Letters to our Mr. Gelder? Yeah. Hmm. Want to see him now? Sure. Uh, here's the brave lad. Neil? Is that your name? Oh, come on, lad, I'm talking to you. Answer me. If you'll take the tapes off my eyes, I'll answer you. And if you'll get these ropes off my arms. No, the tapes stay in your eyes, the ropes stay where they are, and you answer me. Your name. Now, 
What's your name? It's his passport with his name and the letters. Ah. Uh, your name is John Milne. You're from London. Letters to Mr. Andre Gelder. You know him, Mr. Gelder? He's been like that since we took him. Mm. I have a proposition for you, Milne. It's quite simple. I want you to phone Mr. Gelder and tell him you've had a bit of trouble. Now, that's true, isn't it? You are in trouble. You'll ask him to help you. Who are you? Never mind who I am. Will you phone Gelder? No. I give you time to make up your mind. And it'll be better for you if you do it today. If you do it, I'll send you back to London. If you don't, you might end up in a mortuary. All right. Where's the packet? Uh, it's here. Let's have it. Is uh, that what you expected? Yeah. Huh. Some nice uncut stones. Some beauties. What would you say they're worth? Oh, about 60 or 70,000 pounds. Oh, not bad for a few minutes' work. It's just a drop in the bucket. When we get to Gelder, we'll be in the real money. Uh, Mill. Yes? You weren't much use of the courier, were you? What do we do with his passport? Burn it? Do you hear that, Milne? Do we burn your passport? No one saw you being taken. No one knows where you are. No one can help you. Frightening, isn't it? Yes. Will you phone Gelder? No. Sorry to keep you, Bill. We've nothing on uh, David Cater. Are you sure? Is he known in London? Uh, there's a file on him at the yard as thick as the Bible. How about the girl? She's not one of ours, but uh, there was an inquiry from Interpol Paris about a year ago. She was wanted for questioning about some jewel robbers. Does that fit? It does. Jack Milne was carrying a parcel of diamonds, uncut stones. To Amsterdam? Who was the buyer? Uh, Mr. Gelder, Andre Gelder. Do you know him? Of course. A big diamond buyer. A man of good reputation. Very wealthy. Bill, if Helder has had a loss, it isn't private business. It's our business, officially. Not unless he complains to you. You think he won't? Has he made any complaint to you in the last month? Uh, no. Then listen to this. We believe he lost another courier about a month ago. And I believe he has a threat on his life. Anything told to me in this office, Bill, becomes official. If you think any of it is private, let's talk about it over lunch, huh? Uh, no? We can go now. Huh. Goodbye, Noon. We're going to lock you up again. He's been like that all the time. Stubborn. He'll change his mind. And if he won't? It'll make no difference. If he won't phone, then someone else will phone for him. Say he's ill. Will Mr. Gelder come to see him? One courier has disappeared. Now Milne has disappeared. Gelder will know we're in earnest. When do I see you? Uh, tonight. Come to the flat. Goodbye, then. Yes, thanks. <laughs> I'm glad I came. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't come just for the lunch, huh? <laughs> no. You were talking about Miss Lawrence and the inquiry from Interpol Paris. What came of it? We couldn't find her, and uh, there was no follow-up from Paris. Uh, you think uh, she's connected with your friend's disappearance? Not directly. She's in London. Mm. I have news for you, Bill. When I was checking in uh, records, I also checked with passport control. She's in Amsterdam. She arrived on the flight just ahead of you. Did she? Hmm? Now tell me what you know about her. I don't know much about her. 
She wanted to sell me some information. She said she knew Cater and your Mr. Gelder, that Cater had a plot to rob him, if necessary, to kill him. She was frightened, and she wanted money to get away from it. To rob Gelder, if necessary, to kill him? In London, that may seem possible, Bill. But in Amsterdam, it isn't. Why not? The diamond trade is rather strange. Excepting in transit, in small packets of diamonds, the security of the diamond is tight. It would be easier to steal gold from Fort Knox. With uh, Helder alive, there just might be a chance. With Helder dead, they wouldn't have a chance. You're reckoning without David Cater. That girl was frightened. She said she had a friend, Robert Spence. He was a diamond courier for Geldar. Now, he disappeared a month ago. She identified his body in the mortuary at Narden. At Narden? That's what she says. Now, will you check? Of course. I'll do it today. Robert Spence disappeared. He's dead. Jack Milne disappeared. They're moving in on Geldar. Murder isn't private, Bill. What's your interest? My only interest is in Jack Milne. I didn't keep close enough to him. I like that lad. His father's a my friend. If it means tracing Miss Lowens, dealing with Cater, even if it means upsetting the wealthy Mr. Gelder, I'm going to find Jack Milne. You say Gelder hasn't informed the police. When he does, it will come to me. I think you should go and see him, Bill. I'll drop you at his office. Mr. Gelder? Come in, Mr. Kilbraith. Do you have the parcel? I'm not your courier, Mr. Gelder. I've come to tell you that your courier has disappeared. I see. Did you know? I expected him here at ten o'clock this morning. I've been waiting for him. Have you heard from him? No. A phone call from him, a phone call from anyone. I tell you I've not heard from him. In which case you must phone the police. Why do you say this, that I must inform the police? You've just lost a package of diamonds, Mr. Gelder, 70,000 pounds worth. How much do you know about the diamond trade, Mr. Gilbraith? Not much. Then I assure you that our security is very good. No need for police. In time, we recover everything that we lose. Including your couriers? Have you recovered what Robert Spence lost? Not yet. But Spence was an unreliable man. Have you been told that Robert Spence is dead? No. And I don't believe he is. I told you he was unreliable. Today's courier was not unreliable. Have you received any communication since he disappeared? No. Do you know a woman named Anne-Marie Lowens? No. Or a woman, a widow, named Mrs. Van Druten? Why are you asking these questions? I'm asking if you know these women. I have a friend, uh, a Mrs. Van Druten. I think you also have a friend named Lowens. She was a friend of Robert Spence. Did she say that? She identified his body at the police mortuary. She also says that you received a threat to your life. That's not true. Why are you here, Mr. Gilbraith? I'm trying to find your courier, Jack Milne. He's a friend of mine. I'm also here to tell you that you are in danger from a man named Cater, unless you hand over to him all of your wealth. I'm unlikely to do that. I don't care what you do, Mr. Gelder. I am only interested in... Oh, excuse me. Yes, break. Mit wie spreche ich? Ja, ich bin Andre Gilder. Ja? Ja, begrepen. What was that? That was the call on behalf of your friend, Mr. Milne, telling me that he's ill. And that I can see him today and collect the parcel. See him? Where? I'm asked to meet a friend who will take me to him. To meet this friend at the Zyder Amstel Canal at, by the pier near the Beatrix Park. At four o'clock, precisely. Four o'clock? we better go. I'm not a fool, Mr. Gilbraith. I have a business to protect. And I pay your friend, Mr. Evans, to help protect it. I am not going there. I think you should. 
I'll go with you. It will do neither of us any good. The person I have to meet, the person who made the call, is your friend, Miss Lowens. Ah, there you are, Kurt. I got here as soon as I could. Have you seen her? No, not yet. We still have a few minutes. You saw Andre Helder? I did. <laughs> and he told you that the uh, diamond people have their own security, huh? Yes. But it doesn't allow for murder. That boat coming into the pier. Are they gay? Are they for tourists? Mm, tourists use them, yes. So do the citizens. Rather like uh, tram cars. And they're called Ronfartboot. Ah. We'll do a tour one day. <laughs> I can see her now. Where? Over by the bookstore, looking at the postcards. No. Mm. She's taking her time. It's not quite four o'clock yet. Here she comes. Wait here, Court. Good afternoon, Miss Lowens. Remember me? Uh, of course. It's Mr. Galbraith. We met yesterday in London. I'm surprised to see you in Amsterdam so soon. I was tired of London, tired of questions. I decided to come here. Are you waiting for someone? No. Good, I'd like to have a chat with you. Oh, sorry, I've come here to catch the Ronfar boat, and it's just uh, Miss Lowens! I must rush. Bill, no need to go after her. The two men going on behind her are my lads. They'll follow her. They both have personal radios. We can go back to my car and listen for them. <sighs> the trouble with police work, Kurt, it's all watching and waiting. And the more comfortable to wait in here. Huh? Uh. Well... What did you think of Andre Helder? He's a cold fish, but I think he's now worried. Did you ask him to inform the police? I did. He says he has his own security, and it will all come back to him in the end. Did he check on the body in the mortuary? I've asked for the report, and a copy of uh, your Miss Lowen's statement is being sent to me. Strange, isn't it, Bill? What is you say she identified the body in the mortuary, hmm. became frightened, and tried to tell Tommy Evans. Yeah? By him. Well, he now runs a detective agency in London. He acts for Gelder. All right. So she goes to him. And you see her. She pleads for money to get away from Cato. Then she turns up here. On the flight just ahead of me. Just ahead of Jack Milne. Yes. You were saying... Having told you what will happen, she turns up here and tries to lead Helder into a trap. How do you figure it? Well, I think she's acting for Cater. I think the trip to London was part of the plan. Mm -hmm. She knew that anything she told Tommy Evans or told to me would get back to Gelder, trapping him from both sides, between the police and the criminals. Tychus for Commissaris Lindemans. Lindemans? Yes, break. She is from the boat of Wuhan of Pier 5. Adeline, we follow her. Thank you. Ain't. That was young Dykers, uh, uh, the fair haired one. Says Lowens left the boat at Pier 5. That's at the Winkler's card. She left the boat alone, and they're following her. We wait. Hmm. And while we wait? So far as I can see, Bill, you haven't much to go on yet. The word of a woman, an accomplice. I have a feeling. Oh, <laughs> a feeling is poor evidence. And unless Helder complains, there isn't much I can do for you. She phoned Gelder, so she knows where Jack Mill is. Yeah, you have only Helder's word for that. Yes, yes, I wonder what he's up to. <laughs> You think he's a cold fish, huh? Yes, but brave. That's what they say. He has a reputation in the diamond market. Very successful, cold, 
Nerves like steel. Yeah, like his diamonds. Uh, hard. Indestructible. Yes. They may have chosen the wrong one to frighten when they chose Andre Helder. We have also to reckon with Keter. He is also cold and charming with it. I've never known him to pull out of a job. Dikers for commissaris in the months. In the months? Yes, Brick. The is non hotel Hachan in the Rwano Stadistrat. Fairlane, Kaiserhof. Normal routine. The is the house. Bleif, where you bent? Ain't. What was all that about? Your Miss Lowens has gone home. A small hotel in the uh, von Astadestrad. My lads have gone through the usual routine, talked to the receptionist, examined the register. She booked in there, and she's alone. Uh -huh. They'll watch for visitors. Who is it? Open up, friend. It's a friend. All right, hold on. Oh, it's you, Mr. Jacobus. It's me. Where is Cater? Uh, I don't know, Mr. Jacobus. He went out. Uh-huh. You alone in here? Yeah. Yeah, I'm alone. Alone? Now, Brent... Where is Cater? He went home, Mr. Jacobus. That's what he said. Home to his flat. Thank you. Cater speaking. Who is it? It's Eddie. Eddie Brent. Where are you? Still at the warehouse. I had a visitor, David. Jacobus. He's looking for you. Why? Oh, I don't know why, David. He wanted to know where you were. I had to tell him. He's on his way. All right. Uh, David. Yeah? He had two heavies with him. I had to tell him. <laughs> Sounds like they're here. Who is it? Jacobus. Come on, open up, Kate. Just a moment. Ah, all locked up, were you? I wasn't expecting visitors. Come in. No, uh, don't close it yet. I have two friends out there. Ask them in, will you? All right. Come in. Welcome. Can I close it now? Yes. And tell the lads to make themselves at home. Ah. Make yourselves at home. Pour yourselves a drink. Don't they ever talk? No, they listen. I do the talking. Go ahead, then. What brings you here? When the syndicate backs a man, David, it likes to keep in touch. All right, you're keeping in touch. And it likes a return on its investment. Hmm. How'd you like a drink? No, no. They had a return. I did six jobs for them in Paris. Correct. And from that you had your cut. We then put you in touch with two ladies, Miss Lawrence and Mrs. Van Druten. We pointed your nose in the direction of some very big money. How's it going? It's coming along very well. It's been six months and we've had no report from you. The syndicate wonders why. Your Mrs. Van Druten wasn't much use. Ah, you were to use your charm on her, David. <laughs> I used it. Four long months of charm. But she knew nothing about God that could give me a hold over him. It was no help to me. You got a plan of his office for That's her? right. I got a plan of his office. I got a list of his dealings. I got everything but the combination of the safe. But that place is a fortress. You got a list of his dealings, did you? Yes. Uh, let me see it. Yeah. That kind of money in sight. I'll keep this. Why? Just so you won't try to cheat on us. No one's cheating on you. All right, all right. So first you got nothing you could hold over him. Second, the place is a fortress. No one would touch it. I asked the syndicate, but they wouldn't help. So, what next? Well, I've studied Gelder, and I have a plan for him. 
fear. Rich men are always afraid of death, the threat of death, and the fear of death. Go on. And to build fear takes time. But in time, it becomes panic. In the end, you'll hand over. Everyone will be rich. <laughs> in the end? How long is the end? With that kind of money, does it matter? Yes. Yes, it does. We know you are good, David. You are the sure. best. That's why we help you. But the syndicate needs the money now. It won't wait. What do I report to them? You tell them we're almost there. From you and Mrs. Van Druten, I got a line on Gelder's dealings in London. A month ago, one of his couriers disappeared. Disappeared into my hands. His body was found in the sea. No identity. But Gelder knows who it was. I made sure of that. <sighs> a month ago. He got another courier. Yesterday. On the way from London, he disappeared into my hands. In time, he'll be found in the sea. Same spot. Gelder will be told. In time. Fear takes time. Uh, one thing you've forgotten, David. A courier travelling from London to Amsterdam has something. Where is it? I, I was coming to that. Where? Don't push me, Emil. I don't have to push. I have my friends here to do that. All right. I'll get it. It's in the safe. Here it is. Quite a selection of his diamonds. Have a look. Hold them under the light. Yeah. Yeah, they look fine. <laughs> a nice little fortune in the palm of your hand. Easy to smuggle out of the country. It can be sold anywhere. Never lose their value. Imagine a mountain of them. That's what Gelder has. Uh, one more thing you've forgotten, David. What? Uh, two couriers mean two lots. Where's the other? Uh, now, wait. The syndicate needs money. I have two men listening to you, watching you. Where is the other? I need them. Let me see. What price would you put on them at both lots? Well, the first lot, about 50,000. The second lot, about 70,000. There's over 100,000 pounds worth there. I'll take them. No. Why not? I need them to deal with Gelder, to prove that I killed his couriers, that I'm after him. I need them as proof. So do I, as proof to the syndicate that I'm keeping you in line. Oh. Anyway, you say there's more where they came from. When do you start on Gelder? Soon. You do it now. It takes time to frighten a man like that, to panic him. I'm taking these. You're now short of money, David, so you have to start. If you don't, Andre Gelder will not be the only one to have the <laughs> frighteners on him. You understand? Yes. All right, lads, time to go. Mr. Cato will show us out. David. Yes? You start now, tonight. All right. Dykers? Yes, sir. I'm a friend of Commissaris Lindemann, Galbraith. Yes, sir. I saw you at the pier. Still watching the hotel? Yes, sir. Has she had any visitors? Not yet, sir. But we know she had a phone call about an hour ago. We expect a visitor to turn up. I'll wait with you. Who is it? Kater. Come in, David. Did you see Jacobus? I saw him. Oh, that man frightens me. Was he as angry as he looked? Yeah. Did you have to tell him where I was? Oh, I had no choice, David. He had the two woods with him. Mm. I played it like you'd be pleased to see him. Is Mill still here? Yeah. yeah. What did Jacobus want? Action. When? Now. Tonight. But I thought you said... I know what I said, and I know what should be done. But if the syndicate says action, the syndicate gets action. Open it up. Yes. 
Ah, you're still here, Neil. Are you surprised? No. Will you take the tape off my eyes? Why? It won't hurt for long. I promise. Would you like a drink? No. It would help you if you had a good drink. Our Dutch gin is the best in the world. Did you know? Come on. It'll look good at the inquest. Drunk and fell into the sea. Here, open your mouth. Temper, temper. Hold him, Eddie. Right. Now, come on, Milne. Nice, long drink. We have to get you ready. Her visitor hasn't turned up yet. No, sir. I think I'll surprise her. Have a talk with her. I'll come to the desk with you, sir. I know the night clerk. I'd like to see Miss Lowens. Which room is she in? Room number seven, sir. I'll phone her and tell her she has a visitor. Name, sir? Uh, you'll phone her and tell her Mr. Cater is on his way up. Who, sir? Do what he says. It's police business. Yeah. Miss Lawrence, Mr. Cater is on his way up to see you. Is that you, David? Yes. Come in, it's not locked. Dave. Oh, it's you. That's right, it's me. Are you surprised? Yes. I said I wanted to talk with you. All right. Where is Jack Milne? I don't know anyone named Jack Milne. Now listen to me. If anything happens to him, it won't be like Robert Spence. He'll have me on your neck. Where is he? You're hurting me. Where is he? I don't know where he is. Leave me alone. Now, you phoned Andre Gelder today. You phoned Gelder and offered to take him to Jack Mill. No. Asked him to meet you at the pier by the Beatrix Park at four o'clock. Now, I went there. And you were there, waiting. It's a coincidence. Amsterdam is a big city, Mr. Galbraith. It's not as big as you think. You phoned Gelder. Now, I... yes, you did. And you were followed by two Dutch detectives on the boat this afternoon. They are outside of your hotel at the moment. Why don't you invite them in? <sighs> Where is David Cater? I don't know. You're wasting your time, Mr Galbraith. David never tells me what he's doing. Come on, Milne. A nice, long... Think it'll make you feel better. Hold him, Eddie. There goes the gin bottle. Stick it in his face. No, no, no. We mustn't mark him. All right, Milne. Has time. Give me a towel, Eddie. Thanks. Come outside. Sure. Did he hurt you? Not much. Not as much as I'm going to hurt him. A smoke? Oh, thank you. You won't worry it. Yeah. When the syndicate says move, you move. Once you take their money, they're always on your back. Well, couldn't you shake loose? Maybe. Right now, I need their help. I had a call from Anne Marie. She says there's a tech from London in town. Go Braith. <laughs> He's the most persistent tech I know. So the syndicate is right. We should work fast. Is the van in good order? It's over there. It just needs a bit of work on it. How long? Could have it ready in 20 minutes. What's it for? For Milne. They'll be found in the sea tonight. Same place as they found Spence. Fix the van and uh, I'll be back at 11 o'clock. Yeah, David. Oh, and uh, while I'm gone, get another bottle and get him drunk. Dead drunk. It should be easy. 
He hasn't eaten all day. Yeah, we'll have the same setup as for Spence. When it's the same and happens twice, it's eerie. Panic. I want him stripped. No identification, just swimming trunks. Drunk and went for a swim. Drowned. No marks on him. Right. I'll be back to help you. I'm, uh, I'm going to phone Anne-Marie. I'm still waiting, Miss Lawrence. You told me a story in London. You searched my room without permission, Mr. Galbraith. And we were alone. You've no proof that I said anything to you. It's your word against mine. Where is Cater? I don't know. And I don't know anything about your friend. Excuse me. Hello? David. Anne-Marie, I want you to meet me in the Usan. Same place... I'm sorry, um... I'm busy. I have a visitor. Who is it? I told you yesterday. Give it to me. (coughs) Cater? Are you there, Cater? Now listen to me. Was that David Cater? Didn't he tell you? Then you listen to me. Tell him this. I'm going to find Jack Milne, or I'm going to learn what has happened to him. Now, until I do, neither you nor Cater can leave this town. You can leave your detectives on watch, Mr. Galbraith. I'm not going out tonight. Goodbye. Anne Marie. Surprised. Well, when I phoned, you said Galbraith was with you. If you think... Stop worrying, David. No one followed me here. He left two detectives watching the front of the hotel, so it was easy. But I must get back soon. Now, the phone call. You said something about Ustsan. Yes, I wanted a bit of help. But if they're keeping an eye on you, be careful. Uh, Forget it. I can do it with Eddie. Do what? Take care of Gelder's new courier. No, David. No, I came here to tell you. You must wait until Galbraith has gone. He knows about Robert Spence. Good. That means that Gelder will also know. That's what I want. David, this courier is a friend of his. He knows what you're doing and he's searching for you. I can keep out of his way. He won't give up. He said it. Let this one go. We'll find another. No. Anyway, there's nothing Gobraith can do. And there's nothing Gelder can do either. He will agree to hand over his wealth. Not all of it, but most of it. He'll become a party to it. And he will not be in a position to complain. David, let this one go. This man, Galbraith, I just don't like it. He's so quiet. He won't give up. It'll be too late, my love. It'll happen too fast. Very soon it'll all be over, I promise you. In three days, we'll be away. Together. And we'll be very rich. Seven million pounds. In cash and diamonds, not stolen, just transferred. Are you still on my side? Of course, David. Mm. Have I ever pulled out of a job? No. Have I ever failed you? No. You see, I know Gobraith better than he knows me. <laughs> it's time you were back in the hotel. The Dutch police have a habit of making a check on suspects just before midnight. And then they like to relax and take it easy. Can you get back without being seen? No trouble. Be in bed. <laughs> Make a fuss when they waken you. Night, David. Night. And good luck. Ready? Yeah. Just like you said, David. Swimming trunks, out for the count and not a mark on him. Van ready? Yeah. Uh, Give me a lift with him. Right. That's it. (laughs) Oh, a rug to cover him. All nice and tidy. Where's Anne-Marie? She has a visitor. That tech from London. Will she? No, 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 no. She's a smart girl. She'll keep him busy and say nothing. Canardly. Yes.
This was the place? Yes. Seems was quiet enough. Uh-huh. Let's have a walk around. It's quiet. No one about. Let's lift him up. Get it over. Uh, right. Uh, over to the dike. He's still out. Is he breathing? Sure. He's just very drunk. Uh, passed out. How's the tide? Fine. It's just on a turn. Current will take him out. Bring him back in the morning. Drown. Huh. No identity. Another for the mortuary. Give me a hand. Gently. Just roll him over. Episode 2 of Galbraith and the King of Diamonds, with Bernard Hepton in the name part. Tom Watson plays the part of Cater, with Peter Diney as Gelda, Cyril Shapps as Lindemans, and Eva Hatton as Anne Marie. The parts of Dykers and Brent are played by Trader Faulkner and Peter Williams, whilst the head of the syndicate, Jacobus, is played by Stephen Greif. Galbraith is written by Robert Barr and produced by John Brow. <laughs> We present Galbraith and the King of Diamonds by Robert Barr with Bernard Hepton, Tom Watson, Cyril Shapps, Peter Dinley and Richard Davis. Episode 3 in which the King of Diamonds is threatened. My name is Galbraith, Bill Galbraith, ex-detective superintendent. X, because I've just resigned from the yard, hoping to get some freedom from crime. But it was not to be. I was conned into doing a job for a friend, escorting a diamond courier from London to Amsterdam. I had been asked to escort him because we knew of a plot by a London criminal to rob a wealthy diamond buyer, Andre Gelder, and, if necessary, to kill him. Escorting the courier a lad named Jack Milne, was the first step in an inquiry. But the criminal struck first, and I lost the courier and the diamonds. I was in a strange town. I called on an old friend who is in charge of Interpol Amsterdam, Commissaris Lindemans. But while we were making a plan, the gang was warned and decided to get rid of the young courier to commit their second murder. This was the place? Yes. Seems quiet enough. 
Uh-huh. Let's have a walk around. It's quiet. No one about. Let's lift him up. Get it over. Uh, right. And over to the dike. He's still out. Is he breathing? Sure. He's just really drunk. Passed out. How's the tide? Fine. It's just a return. Can't I'll take him out? Bring him back in the morning. Down. Huh. No identity. Another for the mortuary. Give me a hand. Gently. Just roll him over. That's it. Ah, come in, Bill. I have some news for you. The report from Narden about Spence and uh, the statement of the girl. Commissaris, they said news about Jack Mills. In a moment, my friend. First things first, the report on Spence. I'm not interested in Spence. They said news of my lad. All right, all right. There is some news, but it's no more than an incident report, nothing definite. It says that uh, early this morning... At Narden, a young man was taken from the water. No identification. Where is he? Uh, he was taken to the local hospital, but... Uh, oh, don't ask me for more than that. I don't know. Now, will you listen to me? Yes. You asked for the report on Spence. It says simply that uh, a month ago, the body of this other young man was taken from the sea. Also at Narden, drowned... No identification taken to the mortuary. He, too, was a diamond courier and worked for Gelder. It may be that your friend was luckier. I don't know. I'll take you to the hospital now and uh, we can talk about it on the way. You say he was found early this morning? Yes, uh, by the master of a tug as it was leaving harbour. A body floating on the tide. He tried to revive him, but with no result. He returned to the quay immediately and called the police. If he's dead, it's murder, Kurt. We may have to prove murder. A young man in swimming trunks, so no identity. Alcohol in the body, drunk, drowned. You say Jack Milne was drunk? No, I was talking of the first one, Spence. Swimming trunks, alcohol, drowned. Your friend was found at the same spot, also in swimming trunks. If there's alcohol in the body... Don't talk about a body. Oh, sorry. His father is a friend of mine. He looked after me when I was a rookie. That's why I offered to escort the boy. And because you knew this David Cato. I reckon without Cato. I know his record. I should have been more careful. I took my eyes off Jack at the airport for only a minute and he'd gone. His car still in the car park, the door open, the key in the ignition. Gosh, you can't blame yourself, Bill. He wasn't a child. Uh, what age was he? Twenty-eight. But it was his first job as courier. And I was the one who was supposed to know Cater. He was carrying diamonds. Uh, Gelder's diamonds? And Spence was also carrying Gelder's diamonds. If Jack has died because of Gelder... Anger makes for bad detective work, Bill. You know that. But I think like you do. Oh, we can talk about it later. Here's the hospital. Commissaris Lindemann, Sie haben eine Absprache mit Dr. Verhelz. Ja, meneer. Uh, come with me, Bill. Dr. Verhelz? Yeah. Uh, Lindemans. Ah, come in. Uh, this is my friend, Mr. Galbraith. He has come about the lad taken from the sea this morning. Where is he, Doctor? He's here. We saved him from the mortuary. 
That's about all I can say at the moment. He's alive? What is being alive? Respiration has started, but there has been shock. So there can be all sorts of complications. We are making tests. Has he spoken to you? No, and he won't speak today, if ever. We have not made all our tests. There was so much alcohol in the body. He must have been very, very drunk. Uh, doctor, the report said no identification. That is correct. It may be that my friend can identify him. That would be helpful. But it must be no more than just a look at him. He must not be disturbed. Uh, come with me. This way. Excuse me, nurse. There he is. Well, Mr. Galbraith? Yes, that is Jack Milne. And you said he was lucky. Luckier than Robert Spence. Spence was dead, and his body had been eaten in the sea. That's what Miss Lawrence said, and she acted out the horror of it very well. What does her report say when she identified Spence? I don't know what she told you, but uh, the report says only that she thought it might be Spence. His face had been partly destroyed. It wasn't definite enough for a police identification. Kurt, she knew it was Spence. She had no doubt about it. She went there on an errand for Cater. Cater could then inform Andre Gelder that his courier was in the mortuary and begin to threaten him. But Helder would not be threatened. No, so another courier had to be taken to enforce the threat. I think we should both see Helder now. I want to see Anne-Marie Lawrence. We will see Helder first. He's very wealthy and uh, influential, Bill, and so far he's made no complaint to the police. So, officially, I will come with you on the matter of the identification. I'd like to watch him while you talk to him. Mr. Gelder. Ah. Come in, Mr. Gilbraith. Have you some news for me? This is Commissaris Lenemans. Good morning, uh, Commissaris. Good morning, Meneer. Well, Mr. Gilbraith, have you found your friend? Yes. Sir? When I first came to see you, Mr. Gelder, it was to tell you that one of your couriers, Robert Spence, was dead. You did not believe me. That is correct. You told me you had received no news of Spence that you receive no threats to your own life. Why should I receive a threat to my life? This morning, Jack Milne was taken from the sea. Are you sure? When I was here yesterday, I told you he was missing. Yes? I believe you have received threats to your life and to the life of your couriers. But you've made no complaint to the police. Now, will you tell me why? Commissaris. Yes, sir? I had no knowledge of these matters. I'm hearing them from Mr. Gilbraith. I had no information on which to make a complaint to you. The matter of murder is our concern, sir, whether you make a complaint or not. Mr. Galbraith is asking if you have been threatened. Yes, Commissaris. Yes, I have been threatened. Now, please let me explain. As you know, the diamond business is always under threat in some way or another. We take precautions, very strict precautions, and try to ignore the threats. If we didn't, there would be no time to do business. In the matter of Spence, I was told that he'd been killed, and I received a threat to my own life. I made inquiries of the police and was told they had no knowledge of Spence. Is that so? Uh, that uh, could be so, sir. We have not identified him. Does that satisfy you, Gilbraith? I thought Spence made off with the diamonds entrusted to him and that the threat was just part of the theft. How was the threat made? Was it by letter? Uh, no, a phone call. From whom? No name was given. The man said that no name was needed. I would soon know that he meant what he said. Uh, what was the threat, sir? That I would be kidnapped. That means would be used to make me sign over my, my fortune in diamonds, and if I refused, I would be killed. And you ignored it? I do not give in to threats, Mr. Gilbraith. And I didn't believe Spence was dead. However, from what you have said, I must ask the commissaris for protection. This is an inquiry into murder and an attempted murder, attempted Mr. Attempted murder? 
Your courier, Jack Milne, is still alive. He's in hospital. And it's possible that he may be able to speak to us. In which case, I'd better tell you what I know. I had inquiries made and learned that the man who is threatening me is an Englishman named Cater, David Cater. Have you met him? No. And he now works through an intermediary. Your friend, Anne-Marie Lawrence. She is not my friend. She is just someone I know. She has always said she was helping me. When she phoned yesterday, when you were here, she said she would help me to meet Jack Milton. But you refused to see her. After what you had told me, I no longer trusted her. Commissaris, I will not give in to threats, but I am now asking for your protection. Ah, that is wise, Mr. Helder. You will please stay in your office until one of my men comes to you. And you will do as he tells you. Very well. Do you know where Cater is? No. Goodbye, Mr. Helder. Oh, Commissaris. Uh, yes? Uh, when I was making my inquiries, I learned that this man Cater is not working alone. He's working with a crime syndicate. I thought you should know. Do you think he's as brave as he pretends? I don't think he'll give in to threats. And he will cooperate. He lied to me, did you know? When? When I saw him yesterday. He said he didn't know Anne-Marie Lowens. Now he knows her. When we saw him today, he said he didn't know who had threatened him. When he knew that Jack Milne might be able to talk, he admitted he did know. Covered it by saying that he made inquiries. Now, I don't think he'll cooperate. He thinks he can do it himself. He has enough money and enough power to try it. I think we should now pick up Miss Lowens. Commissaris for Dakers. Commissaris for Dakers. Commissaris for Dakers. Commissaris for Dakers. Not answer. Commissaris for Dakers. Dykes for Commissaris, Sprague. I'm coming to the hotel. Is the girl still there? She has left the hotel. I am following. She is in the docks. Keep close to her. So far, so good. We had better catch up with him. Commissaris for Dykes. Dykes here, Commissaris. Where are you now? At top 10. The girl is going into a shed. Do I follow? Wait. I will be with you. She's probably going in to meet Kata. Hold on to your hat. We'll be there in a minute. Dakers. Yes, sir. That shed? Yes, sir. She has just gone in. Let's get her. Commissaris, the place is empty. The office. It's Eddie Brent. Remember me, Eddie? Oh, uh, Mr. Galbraith. Where's your friend Cater? Who? Cater! Where is he? I don't know, Mr. G. I haven't seen him in weeks. Where's the girl? Who? The girl she was seen coming in. Well, lay off me, will you? I didn't see anyone. Dakers, take him in. Yes, sir. Uh, what's this? Local cops? Yes, Eddie, local cops. You're nicked. What for? We'll tell you that at the station. Come on. <clears throat> Well, now we can have a look round. <laughs> it never changes. What doesn't change? They all have these calendars. Nudes. Oh, <laughs> it passes the time. Found something? Yes. Jack Mills' passport and two letters. His credentials from Tom Evans to Gelder. Try that cupboard, Kurt. 
Is anything there? Yes, clothing. Jacket, trousers, shirt, shoes. Yes, Jack's. They must have held him here before taking him away. There's a van outside. I want that... I, I'd like it to be examined. Dykers? Yes, sir. Get some assistance and have that van impounded. Yes, sir. At last, we have some evidence. I'd like a talk with Eddie Brent. All right, Eddie, you're in the police station, so you talk. To you? You've no authority here, Mr. G. You're not in London. No, but your Dutch isn't so good, Eddie, is it? You talk to me. About what? Anything that comes into your head. Look. Well, about this passport. It was found in your office. Name on it, Jack Milne. Then about these clothes found in your office. They belong to Jack Milne. He was taken out of the sea at Narden. I know nothing about it. Jack Milne does. He isn't dead, Eddie. He's in hospital. You're a bloody... I'm a what? Go on. What are you going to say? That I'm a liar? You bungled it, Eddie. And his passport and his clothes were found in your office. It was done last night. You have a van. And you said you hadn't seen Cater for weeks, so it's down to you, all by yourself. Attempted murder. Now, save yourself, Eddie. Where is Cater? I don't know. Was he with you when we arrived? Did he run off? Did he go off with a girl? All right. If you want to spend 15 years in a Dutch jail, that's up to you. It might help if you told me what Cater is planning. Find him, Mr. G, and ask him yourself. Dykers, take him down. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. G? Yes? Thanks. I'll be safe in jail. It's more than Cater will be. He's got people on his neck. Who? I don't know. But they're after you as well. Who is it? Come on, Cater, open up. Jacobus. Oh, alone this time? I'm never alone, David. I just leave the door. Come in, lads. Mm. Now you can close it. Thank you. <laughs> Safety bolt. <laughs> Safety chain. <laughs> Are you always so careful? Always. Now, what happened? Well, I did what you said. I put him in the sea last night. It all went smoothly. I now wait until afternoon and phone Gelder. Put on the uh, frighteners. It won't work, David. We have a new plan. Why? The syndicate had a report on your Mr. Gelder. They say he's hard, cold. They think it will take too long to look, I've been working on this for months. Sure, sure. It was a good plan, David, and you're a good worker. You've killed two of his couriers. He will be frightened, but the syndicate knows best. If you wait too long, he'll get protection. So you work fast. You take him now. Now, what help do you need? Would you like a drink? No, but you look like you need one. Yeah. Uh, there's one bit of help I need. You'll have to get rid of a copper. Oh, who? A London copper called Galbraith. It seems this courier we ditched was a friend of his. And he's over here sticking his nose in, asking questions. What kind of questions? Oh, uh, the usual. What happened to Milne? Where is he? Who did it? And when they find his friend, he'll get tough. If you want me to take Gelder now, you must get rid of Galbraith. An English cop? <laughs> no trouble. Where do we find him? Ah. I can lay that on any time. If Anne-Marie phones him and says she wants to talk about me, you'll come running. You tell me some lonely place and she'll get him there. Good. We'd better have a description of him. He's about 48. He looks younger. Six foot, 13 stone, smooth, but he's as tough as nails. Anne-Marie will fix it and point him out. Okay. We'll take care of your copper... And you'll get Gelder for us. I asked, what help do you need? For Gelder, I want two fast cars and two drivers. One car is a decoy and one for taking him. I have a plan of his house, and it has lots of alarms, so I'll need someone who can fix them. Okay. Two cars, two drivers, someone to fix the alarms. I'll arrange that. You work out your plan, and we'll be back.
Lindemann speaking. Put me through to Cornelius, please. Yes, I'll hold the line. Come in. Ah, come in, Bill. Take a seat. I won't be a moment. Uh, Cornelius. Uh, Lindemann's here. Have you assigned a man to Andre Helder? You have. And he's with him now? Thank you. I've put a bodyguard on Helder. At least we'll know what's happening at that end. Have you had news of Jack Mill? So far, there's no change. When he's able to talk, we'll be told immediately. I think you should put a guard on him, too. Of course. Uh, Lindemann speaking. I want Cornelius again. Ah, Cornelius, I want you to assign another man to guard a patient at Narden Hospital. The doctor's name is Verhelts, and the patient's name is Jack Milne. I want it done now. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. That's being done. What else? Find David Cater. He's living somewhere in Amsterdam, and you have a photo of him. I'll have it taken around the hotels. But if he's living in a private apartment, it won't be so easy. If he's heard about Jack Mill, he'll have gone to ground. Did you have any luck with the man we found at the docks, uh, Eddie Brent? Not much. He's not bothered about being arrested. Talks about Cater having some men on his neck. And that's what Helder said. He said Cater was working with a syndicate. Any thoughts on it? No. If it's true, it could be the Mafia the Sicilian Brotherhood, or one from England. A syndicate? Mm, that would fit. Every five years or so, some crook gets the idea for a big job, the big dream. He figures how to knock over Fort Knox, the Bank of England, or how to take the crown jewels. <laughs> or how to take Mr. Helder. Yes, yes, how to take the very wealthy Mr. Gelder. He begins work on it and finds it's too big for him. Or it needs a lot of money to set it up. So he looks for help. <laughs> it never changes, does it, Bill? He finds help and they put up money. He spends their money and they're on his neck. A job that requires two murders just to set it up. It must be a bigger job than you thought. Does it fit with your man, Cater? So far, yes. And meantime... I'll take a walk in your streets. Keep an eye open for Anne-Marie. Thanks for the coffee. Where can I contact you? At the Royal. I walked the streets of Amsterdam looking for David Cater or his girlfriend. If Cater was to carry out his plan, he would have to move around. I searched the crowds on the pavements, watched the taxi ranks, the tram cars mixed with the visitors around the souvenir stalls, book stalls, the crowd around a barrel organ. It seemed like weeks since I'd taken the job, but in fact it was just two days. Two days in which I had got mixed up in some very nasty happenings. I walked past Andre Gelder's fashionable office. I had no trust in the rich Mr. Gelder and hoped that he wouldn't try anything on his own. I went to the landing keys to watch the Ronfart boatman come in. Detective work is 45% routine, 45% experience, and 10% luck. I didn't have the luck. When I got back to my hotel, Tommy Evans was waiting for me. Hello, Tom. Hello, Bill. Where have you been? I've been waiting for you. What brought you from London? Well, the news about Jack Milne. How is he? He was lucky not to be murdered. Is there anything I can do to help? If you want to help, you can talk to Gelder, your client. Talk some sense into him and find out what he's up to. Come off your high horse, Bill. It was Gelder who asked me to come over. He phoned me today. Now, if it's money you need... I don't want money. I just want to get Jack Milne safely out of this and get him home. And Katar? That is personal. First, I want to see Jack's all right. And Mr. Gelder? He's nothing to me. He pays us to protect him, Bill. He's our responsibility. He's your responsibility. I'm a free agent. Oh, have a drink. All right. A lager. I can do with something to cool me. Two lagers, please. Uh, yes, sir. Now, Bill. Can I help you? You say you have connections in Europe. Correct. Oh, thanks. 
Cheers. Cheers. Your client is in deep trouble. But he's a stubborn man, and he thinks he knows best. But he has a right to be difficult, Bill. He's a law unto himself. He's probably the richest man in Amsterdam. He may soon be the richest dead man in Amsterdam. Now look, Tom. He knows that Cater isn't acting alone against him. That he has the backing of an organization, a gang. Well, when he phoned today, he told me so. I made inquiries. Now, I have some good connections with the Paris police, and I have some facts for you. About this gang? Yes, I have them here. When Cater was engaged in jewel robberies in France last year, he had backing. Not the mafia, but an organization just as dangerous. It's called the Syndicate. Do you know them? No. Well, they operate throughout Europe. Wherever there's a big job, they put up the money, and they put up experts. Now, in Paris, the syndicate man who dealt with Cater was called Emile Jacobus. I have his record here and a photo. He yeah, looks a wicked type. Oh, he is. I mean, read his record. It's a very wicked record. Does that help you? I don't know. Is there anything else? Oh, the Lowen's girl has left London. Oh, I know that. She came just ahead of Jack Milne. Cater snatched him, and then he and a lag named Eddie Brent threw him in the sea. Uh, did you give the money to Miss Lowens? Oh, yes, sir. The money she asked you for, £10,000. Did Gelder tell you to pay her? Yes. Now, Tom, there's something going on that we don't know about. When will you see Gelder? Not today. If he's being free with his money, you can spend some of it on Jack. Let's go and see him. Maybe he can talk now. Dr. Verhelt? Yes? It's Galbraith again. I brought uh, Mr. Evans. He's the employer of your patient, Jack Mill. Come to pay his bills and see he's well looked after. How is the patient? Uh, by no means well, but he's conscious now. He's been trying to speak. Incoherent, of course, and uh, since he's been incoherent in English, there's nothing we can make of it. Can we see him, Doctor? For a moment. Uh, this way, please. You may ask him questions, but if he cannot answer clearly, you must leave it at that. Excuse me, nurse. Here is the patient. I think he recognizes you. Hello, Jack. It's Galbraith. Mr. Evans is here. Can you see him? No, don't, don't try to answer, lad. Just try to nod or shake your head. Yes or no. Yeah, that, that's fine. Now tell me, was this done to you by three men? No, no. Two men? Good, good, yes. Was that a girl? Did you hear them mention a girl? You didn't. I'm going to show you some photos. Was this one of the men? It wasn't. Was this one? It was. And this? It was. Thanks, lad. Now, that's all for the moment. He didn't recognize Jacobus but he recognizes Kitter and Brent. Thank you, Doctor. Now it's coming into place, Tom. It was done by Brent and Kitter. One man murdered, one damn nearly murdered, and that just for openers. Well, what do we know about it? As yet, not much. You better see your diamond dealer. Tell him about this syndicate. Make him see sense and get the truth out of him. Well, do you think he knows the truth? Yes. Are you coming? No, but I'll drop you there. I'm going to see Eddie Brent. We have him in the nick. How's the cell, Eddie? Comfortable? Uh, not bad. How long are you keeping me here? Till I'm finished with you. I've been to see the lad you dumped in the water. You were out of luck, Eddie. He was picked up a few minutes later by the skipper of a tug. He can talk now. 
He recognized your photo. Says it was done by you and Cater. When he can talk a bit better, he'll tell you I was only the dog's body, doing what I was told. It still makes you party to attempted murder. Now look at this photo. Emil Jacobus. You know him. Do you? He's the man on Cater's back. He goes around with two eddies. He's on your neck, too. When he finds that the drowning job was bungled, I wouldn't give a light for your chances. Wouldn't you? No. That's why you can't scare me, Mr. G. I'm safe in here. Then why don't you help me, Eddie? Tell me what they're going to do to Mr. Gelder. What Cater was planning to do and what your code was is going to do are two different things. I don't know. Come in, Mr. Evans. It was very kind of you to come over so quickly. What news have you? It's bad news, I'm afraid, Mr. Gelder. I have some further information about the syndicate you mentioned. I'm told it's rather formidable. I have always known it was formidable. That's why I've been paying you to protect me. And we are protecting you, sir. Are you sure? All you've done is to send this Galbraith... And he says he's not even employed by you. He's a very experienced detective. I have great faith in him. Maybe so, but I have not. He's indiscreet, Mr. Evans. He also tried to be a bully. He came here demanding explanations. He then brought a commissaris of police, and I was put under police protection. It's in your own interest, sir. Tell me, how can I go about my business with a policeman standing at my elbow? You will get rid of this police protection, and you will dismiss this Galbraith. But why? Because I'm paying your agency to do as I say. All right. Now, before I asked your agency to protect my property, Mr. Evans, I had a report on you. It is said that you are an experienced detective and that you are discreet. I believe that. So you'll get rid of Galbraith and I will tell you why, and I will tell you in confidence. Is it in confidence? Yes. Sit down, please. It isn't the first time that criminals have turned envious eyes on my fortune, Mr. Evans, or on my diamonds. But it's the first time that the envy has been so persistent and so well organized. As you know, the police are not very good at preventing crimes of this kind. So I came to you. I asked only that you found the name of the man who was threatening me. You did. David Cater. I asked about the syndicate, and you gave me that name too. Emil Jacobus. Correct. I'm a wealthy man, Mr. Evans, and I have no wish to be killed. Also, I have very special connections in the capitals of Europe, much better than Mr. Cater or Mr. Jacobus. I can command things to be done and pay well for it. Now that I know who they are, I can buy the removal of David Cater and Emil Jacobus. Their removal? You mean their death? Since we are alone, Mr. Evans, with no one to overhear us, yes. If it is to be my death or theirs, why not? What would you do? Would you can arrange this? With discretion. That is what I buy, Mr. Evans, discretion. But don't look so worried. I ask only that you protect my diamonds. I will protect myself. I must advise you against it. You may be right. Forget what I said. I will not involve you in any way. I will go into hiding until this is over. Where? But it wouldn't be hiding if I told the world, would it? I will go home tonight. I will pack. Tomorrow I will go away. But first you must call off Galbraith. And you must call off this police protection. I thank you for the names. Goodbye, Mr. Evans. Cater speaking. Who is it? Jacobus. Ah, where are you? Downstairs. Get the chains off your door. I have someone who wants to meet you. We're on our way up. Right. Come in. You're back early. The syndicate has been very efficient, my friend. They have made the arrangements. Uh, this is Paul Meyer, the man who will fix the alarm you spoke of. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have the plan of Gelder's home? Yeah, I'll uh, get it for you. 
Yeah, here it is. Spacious grounds, so we won't be disturbed. An elegant but not very large house. He lives alone with only two servants, a man and a wife. Where do they sleep? Uh, they sleep in this part of the house, in, uh, in this room. Uh-huh. The girl is a fussy man, doesn't like too many servants around. He has three gardeners, but they don't live on the premises and leave about eight. Now, he, uh, he has this part of the house to himself, and he sleeps in this bedroom. Mm-hmm. Lots of valuables in the house, paintings, antiques, and the house of the alarms all over the place. The very best. I hope your friend can deal with them. Do you have a sketch of the alarm system? Sure. All the details. Here it is. Good, good. Let Paul have a look at it on his own. Ah, uh, yes, sure. Uh, have you spoken to Anne Marie? Not yet. Phone her now. Any place in mind to uh, do, Galbraith? You're planning to take Gelda after midnight? Hmm? Yeah. Have her meet Gerd Braith at about ten o'clock. A small club would be best. It suggests people around so he will come on his own. Mm-hmm. Not too quiet. Uh, one in a side street. Uh, does she know the Mervu? Uh, yeah. Phone her. Okay. It's David. Uh, I have a job for you, Anne-Marie. Yes? I want you to phone Galbraith and arrange to meet him. Tonight, at ten o'clock. Galbraith? Why? Listen to me and don't ask questions. Are you listening? Yes, David. Galbraith left you his phone number. Mm. Arrange to meet him at the Mervu at ten o'clock. Tell him you have some news about me. About you? Uh, Listen... You won't have to speak to him. When Galbraith arrives, you will point him out to a friend. Then you'll leave. You want Galbraith off your back, don't you? Yes, David. Then do as I tell you. The mere vu at ten o'clock. Let me know when it's fixed. She'll do it. Where would you like Galbraith to be found? I want no trace of him. I want him rubbed out. Galbraith? This is Anne-Marie Lowens, Mr. Galbraith. I've been trying to get in touch with you all evening. I'm sorry, I've been out. Where are you? In a club. David's let me down. Have you been drinking? Well, of course I've been drinking. Are you surprised? I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Galbraith. You know where I am? Come any time. Oh, I'm in no condition to come to your hotel. I'm in a club, the Mirvu. Do you know it? No. Oh, ask anyone. They'll tell you where. If you want to know what's happening, come and talk to me. About David Cater? Yes. Can you get here by ten? If you take too long, I'll be stoned. Miss Lawrence? He'll come. What do you want me to do? For a start, you can stop pretending you're drunk and stay here. You will watch the club through that hatch, and when he comes in, you point him out to me. Then you leave. Yes. I found the Mervo. It was in a narrow little side street with just room to park my car. It was the only bright spot on the darkened street. Tiny neon lights welcoming visitors, narrow entrance... It was also a tiny little club. Subdued lights, 15 or 20 people at tables. I gave my eyes time to get used to the gloom, but there was no sign of the girl. I took my drink to a table and looked round again. Most of the couples were snuggling close together, but I reckoned Anne-Marie would be on her own. There was a powder room, and I kept my eye on the door. But she didn't appear. After an hour and three cognacs, I was still reluctant to give up. I wanted news of Kater. But it looked like a wasted evening. Good night, sir. Good night. Keep quite still, Galbraith. Keep your hands where they are. Now unlock your car, slowly. 
Now hand me your car keys. Don't look around. I don't have to. It's Emil Jacobus. Correct. So be quiet and do as you're told. Now get in. Where are we going? No need for you to know. It's a one-way journey, Galbraith. was episode three of Galbraith and the King of Diamonds, with Bernard Hepton in the main part. Tom Watson plays the part of Cater, with Peter Dineley as Gelda, Cyril Shapps as Lindemans, and Richard Davis as Evans. Eva Haddon plays Anne-Marie Lowens, and Trader Faulkner and Peter Williams play Dykers and Brent. Emil Jacobus is played by Stephen Greif. Galbraith is written by Robert Barr, and produced by John Browell. Present Galbraith and the King of Diamonds, a serial in six parts by Robert Barr, with Bernard Hepton, Tom Watson, Cyril Shapps, Peter Dineley, and Eva Haddon. Episode 4, The Seven Million Pound Touch, in which the King of Diamonds begins to lose a few tricks. My name is Galbraith, ex-detective superintendent, ex of Scotland Yard. They say once a detective, always a detective. Well... I was asked to do an inquiry for a friend. It led me to Amsterdam and to a plot to kidnap a wealthy diamond buyer, André Gelder, to rob him and to kill him. While I was making inquiries, I had a phone call asking me to go to a nightclub to meet a contact, a woman, Anne-Marie Lowens. She wasn't in the club. And when I left to go back to my car... Keep quite still, Galbraith. Unlock the car slowly and hand me the keys. Now, get in. Two other men got into the back seat and one leveled a gun at my head. The girl had done her job well. I didn't know it at the time, but my removal, and I hoped it was only my removal from the scene was to clear the way for the kidnapping of Andre Gelder. The kidnapping was about to begin. Paul? Yes? How long? Well, the alarm system is pretty tricky, but I'm almost through. Which part of the house do you want to get into? That bedroom up there. We take him, and then out through this library window. Well, is that all? How about the servants, this old man and his wife? Well, they sleep on the other side. They won't trouble us. One more thing. Yeah? When we're through, can you refix the alarm like it hadn't been tampered with? Sure. And a couple of jiffies to unfix it. Five minutes to put it back like new. Good. It must look like no one's been here. The vanishing trick. Is the car waiting? Two cars. The decoy and the one we take him in. What time is it? Uh, it's just on two o'clock. Gather will be asleep. 
That's it. Now, there should be no alarm when the window opens. All right. Follow me up. Hey, before we go up, a present from Jack Orbus. Two uncut diamonds. Your credentials to Gelder. All right. Up we go. Uh, quietly. his wealth. Gelder! Gelder! Wake up! Mm. Mm. Hey. Oh. <clears throat> Quiet! Now sit up. Hmm. There's... There's no need to point a gun at me. Who are you? Take a look at these. Do you recognize them? Hmm. Yes. Tell me. One uncut diamond from the parcel Spence was carrying, and one from the parcel Milne was carrying. So, you know who I am? Yes. Have you come to kill me? No. We've come to take you away and talk to you. But if you make a sound, I'll kill you. You've been very stubborn, Mr. Gelder. Two men have died because you didn't see reason. Why can't we have this talk here? I don't trust you. Now, keep still. We should tie him. Let him put his dressing gown on first. Here it is. And we'd better take a set of his clothes. A complete set, like he's dressed to go out. Ah. Suit. Ah. Shoes. Ah. Underwear. Shirt. And a tie. Oh, and socks. All right. Anything else we should take? Cufflinks. Got them. Oh, and an overcoat and a hat. Oh, they'll be in the hall. Look, you take them downstairs and I'll bring these. And, Gelda, go quietly. Overcoat, scarf and hat. Is the alarm on this door all right? Yeah, they're all off. Let's get them out. Oh, we did it. We got him. Where are you taking him? A detour. Until we're clear of the house. Okay, but Jacobus said... When we're clear, you can phone Jacobus. Oh, by the way, they've got Galbraith. Ah, Good. So, you know who I am, Galbraith. Emil Jacobus. I recognized you from a photograph. There's one at police headquarters. <laughs> it will do them no good. You won't be around long enough to tell them. Then why are you waiting? The small matter of a phone call to tell me that you've wasted your time, that we have Gelder. Taken by Kitter. <laughs> you've spent your time well, haven't you? You know me, you know Kater. What else do you know? I said what else. I heard what you said. What else do I know? Mm. That I was tricked into going to that nightclub by Kater's girlfriend. I was set up. She did it well. I wondered if you'd come alone. Do all English cops go alone, unarmed? Well, they're never alone. There's always someone who'll look after them. Not this time. What are you going to do with Andre Gelder? We don't think it's right that one man should be so wealthy. Well, how long do you wait? Not long. Ah. This is it. Jacobus, who is it? Paul, how did it go? You left him? Where? I said to bring him to me. Where did he take him? All right, all right, you come straight here. Bad news? I think our friend Kater has gone off on his own. <laughs> With Gelder? He always intended to, didn't you know? I said I think. 
For Kate's sake, it had better not be true. For Gelder's millions, wouldn't you have gone off on your own? If you know so much about him, where would he take him? Come on, you're a cop. What do you know about him? I haven't seen him since I came to Amsterdam. I've seen you, I've seen Anne-Marie, I've seen André Gelder. But I've never caught sight of David Cater. Come in! Come in, Paul. What happened? Well, he said he was bringing him here. He dropped me at a phone box to ring and see if you were ready. Then he ditched me, pushed off. Where did he go? I don't know. I mean, he ditched me, left me standing. Who's this? Ah, the English cop, Galbraith. You have to get rid of him first, then you find Gelder. Sure, Emil, sure. For the cop. Let me see. You'll need a gun, huh? Yeah. Here. Is Otto downstairs? Yeah, he's waiting. Take him with you. Get rid of Galbraith and then find Cater. I was enjoying our talk, Galbraith, but your time is up. So sorry. Time you were going. Come on. So Cater ditched you, ran off with Gelder and the loot. Shut up. Jacobus didn't like it. Cater drove away. Maybe he had a reason. I'll bet. Two million reasons. You can't ditch the syndicate, not in Europe. We'll find him. Now shut up. We drove out of town, keeping to the quiet roads. It was a long drive, always heading north, out into the open country. Where are you taking me? Does it matter? No. You're going to have your own little part of the common market. Six foot be two. Paul. Yeah? I think there's someone on our tail. Is it Cater? No. It isn't his car. Oh, it's just a night driver keeping close for company. Better let him pass. Sure. It's okay, he's away. Anne-Marie? Yes. Who is it? It's Jacopus. Emile, have you anything to tell me? No, I've been asleep. Oh, what time is it? Never mind what time it is. Have you heard from David? No. He has Gelda. Do you know where he's taken him? No. I want you to come and see me. Now? I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. You come now and see me. Yes, yes, Emile. Paul, there's another car on our tail. Where? About 300 yards behind. Don't get edgy, it's a free country, he's just going home. On the quiet road at this time in the morning, we have one ahead of us, Paul, and one behind us. You should step on it. It's the police. For God's sake, go, Paul. Them is injured, Commissaris. Look after him. You all right, Bill? Yes, just about. <laughs> and you said you didn't need protection. Yes, I was wrong. How did you get here? Dykers was keeping watch on you. He lost you, but picked up the car. He used the radio, pulled ahead, and we came up behind. Who have we got? That one's called Paul. The injured one's Otto. They work for Jacobus. Cornelius? Dykers? Yes, Commissaris. Take charge of these two. And Dykers? Sir? Thank you. I, I am sorry I, I lost you, sir, but I found you again. See you later, sir. I'll drive you back, Bill. Uh, before we go, Aunt Gelder was kidnapped tonight, taken away. Do you know where? No. I think we should start by having a look at his house. 
No signs of a kidnapping bill. The alarm system is set and untouched. And the place is a fortress. I know he was taken from here. The house is full of antiques, valuable paintings. Nothing has been touched. Well, they wouldn't touch them. When they have Gelder, they have everything. He told Tom Evans he was going to pack tonight. He was going away. Looks like he just dressed and went. Has anyone spoken to the two servants? Yes, he told them he was leaving in the morning. Well, he didn't wait for the morning. He was taken in the night. You could be right. Packed his dressing gown and... uh, Oh, didn't pack his slippers. Where? They're here, by the bedside. Well, that's a start. And he didn't take his small change. Didn't take his wristwatch. For a methodical man going on a journey... He'd take his watch. Yes? Excuse me, commissaris. Yes, Dekers. The two servants say he did plan to leave this morning. Last night he packed a traveling case, told him he would be away for some time. Anything else? There are tire tracks outside, sir, but they do not match with Gelder's car. It is still in the garage, and his traveling case is in the car. Thank you, Dacus. Well done. Yes, Cater did a fair job. With a bit of luck, we'd have thought Gelder went off on his own. Now, what now? You say Jacobus is looking for him. We find him. That will be too late. Our job is to find Gelder before he's killed. Well, Mr. Gelder, are you ready to do business? Do you call kidnapping business, Mr. Cater? This time it is. A simple transaction between you and me, and no one to interfere. Tell me of this uh, transaction. Of course. You're a very wealthy man, Mr. Gelder. You are now about to sign your money over to me. Not all of it, but most of it. Then you'll give me the numbers if you're safe deposit vaults, And you'll sign an authority for the transfer of your stock of diamonds. Again, not all of them, but most of them. All of them would arouse suspicion. Just most of them, like a business deal. And you think such a business deal would go through without question? Hmm. You're very cool about it, wouldn't it? No. First, let's take the money. You're not a client of mine, Cater. Your name has never appeared on my accounts. So my bankers would refer to me in person. Secondly, you are not a diamond dealer. The transfer of such a large stock of diamonds would not be honored without investigation. In my absence, it will not be honored at all. And if I am dead, you will get nothing. I can do without the lecture. It will be honored. Without my presence, free and unhampered, it will not. If you want a ransom, I suggest you name a reasonable sum. That might be possible, and I might even help you. (laughs) It's all possible, Mr. Gelder, and you're in no position to stop it, nor are your bankers. I've been working on this plan for a long time. I know more about your business than you think. You once had a business partner, Van Druten. That is correct. Julius Van Druten. He is dead. I know he's dead. I do my homework. He left a widow, Betty Van Druten. She still has a small interest in your business. That is so. Her husband was your partner, and she, in a small way, is still your partner. It would not be suspicious if you gave her authority to do some deals for you, and if you gave her access to the money and the diamonds. Is she in this with you? No. But she looks on me as a friend. I could say an intimate friend. You put her name on the authority. It's quite a plan, Mr. Cater. But it is still impossible because you are reaching too high. You're being too greedy. In my book, most is not greedy. I'll leave you something for yourself. I have no wish to be killed, Mr. Cater. But it will be for nothing. Such large sums will not be transferred without my being present. Without my word in person. It's how I run my business. They will have your word in person. At the correct time, you'll phone your bankers and the security guard at the vaults. You will assure them that it is your wish. You won't leave here until you've done so at the proper time. 
If you try to warn them, you won't live to enjoy your fortune. You killed one of my couriers. Because of your stubbornness, two of your couriers. I'm told Milne is still alive. It makes no difference. This is a transaction between you and your partner. And my name won't be mentioned, but if you make trouble, you'll be dead. You must give me time to think about it. Certainly. You have two hours. Come in, Anne-Marie. You came quickly. What is it you want? I want David. I think your boyfriend has tried to trick me. Why should he do that? You tell me. You're closest to him. Come on, come on. He discussed his plans with you. What were they? He didn't tell me. I just followed the couriers and pointed them out to him. He killed two of them. I had no part in that. I I didn't know they were to be killed. What else did he ask you to do? Hmm? I went to London for him. That's where Galbraith found me. Since I phoned you, I've had other news. Two of my men, Otto Schulz and Paul Meyer, are in the hands of the police, and your friend Galbraith is free. Do you know what that means? You set him up. He'll be after you. And if I don't find your boyfriend, I'll be after you. I want out of it, Emil. You'll get out of it if you do as I tell you. Cater will need someone to help him. He'll get in touch with you. When he does, you'll get in touch with me. If you don't... Please. No. You'll work for me. Hmm? Yes. If David's gone, I'm... I've a hotel bill to pay. You need money? Mm. Here. Here's money. See that you earn it. Yes, Emil. Commissaris, I have got the two men in the cells. Thank you, Dakers. We'll see them later. Very good, Commissaris. Min here, Galbraith. Nabil, you say Jacobus is looking for Cater. He's looking for Gelder. At first, he must find Cater. This house you were taken to, uh, have you any idea where it is? No, I was driven through side streets all around the place in the dark. It had an interior garage, so I never saw the house. A building with a garage inside? No, oh, it's not unusual. It doesn't help. One other thing. While I was in the house, I had a train about half a mile away. It was a goods train. It whistled as though it was approaching a station. I checked the time. It was 02.45. 02.45. Huh. That's a bit better. We'll check that. In custody, we have Eddie Brent. But he's too frightened to talk. Uh, it doesn't say much for the image of the police court. They're more afraid of the syndicate than they are of us. Yeah. But we now have the two we took tonight. Paul Mayer and Otto Schultz. What do you know of them? The one called Paul was on the kidnapping. Mm. His record says uh, he's an electrical expert. He probably fixed the alarm system. Uh, it was neatly done. And Helder had told his servants that he was going away. Do you know why he was going away, Kurt? He was going into hiding. He told Tom Evans that he had a way of dealing with the threat. Did he say how? He was going to hire a killer to get rid of him. He didn't have time. Are we so sure? He had all day yesterday to arrange it, and he can afford to pay. How about the other we took, this Otto? Ah, he's just a heavy protector. I think we should have a talk to them. Mayor is the important one. Paul Mayer? Here. Yeah. We met tonight, Galbraith. You took part in a kidnapping, and you were ordered to kill me. Don't push it, copper. I was just taking you for a run. <laughs> to give me a small part of the common market, you said. Two foot by six, buried. <laughs> Prove it. You're not so smart, lad. You were given the slip by Cater tonight, and then you were caught. Jacobus isn't going to like you. Where's the house? What to ask? I'm in a hurry, Meyer. I'm offering you a deal. If you don't take it, then Schultz will. What deal? If you cooperate. First, where's the house? It's hard to find. Try. 
If you have a piece of paper, I could draw it. Right. There you are. And I've written the number. Thanks. Now, what's the deal? Well, I'll check this first and tell you later. Gilder? Yes? Time's up. What's your answer? It seems you won't listen to advice. I've had all the advice I can take. A young man who wants to be rich. Hmm? Yes. Without working? I've worked hard for it, Gilder, so don't waste time. I know how much you're worth, and I know how your business works. From Mrs. Van Druten? <laughs> She's a very talkative lady. And she does know your business. You think if I write this authority on just any kind of paper, it will be accepted? No. I have all the right kinds of paper for you. I broke into your office two months ago. I have your own business paper, your private paper, your own envelopes, the documents on which you make these deals, and I have a typewriter that matches the one used by your secretary. And I've no alternative... You've been very thorough. I don't take chances. You can start writing these letters of authority and don't play tricks. I'm unlikely to throw my life away. But what assurance do I have that when I've written them you won't kill me? You have good assurance. I need you to phone your bankers and to phone the security guards. And then? I don't want all you have. I'll leave you enough money and just enough diamonds to set up in business again. If I do that, why should I kill you? How much do you want? In money? Two and a half million. <laughs> For that amount, my bankers will demand to see me. No, they won't. Because you won't draw it here. You'll transfer the money to your Swiss account. It would be unethical for your Dutch banker to object to that. You will then write to your Swiss bankers, giving Mrs. Van Druten authority to draw on the account. Totally, if necessary. You have thought of everything. And you'll write to Mrs. Van Druten, giving her this authority and giving her your Swiss account number. I see. And the diamonds? I'll take four-fifths of your stock. Tell me, why are you so obsessed with diamonds? Because they're small and very valuable. You hold a large stock of uncut diamonds. They can be sold anywhere in the world, at any time. That is true. And they're easy to smuggle. You will be a very rich young man. And you'll be alive. You'll write the letters of authority by hand. They're important enough for that. The transfer documents you'll dictate to me, and I'll have them typed. As you say, you leave nothing to chance. I'll give you no trouble. Anne-Marie Lowens, who is it? This is David. David! I've been so worried about you. Why? Jacobus is looking for you. I know. Darling, he's paid me money to find you. He was threatening me. He says if I don't help yeah, him... All he's... right, all right, all right. Don't be worried. Are you still with me? Oh, of course, David, always. Ah, that's my girl. We're almost there. We're about to be rich. I want you to meet me. No, I can't, David. I'm being watched. The police are still watching me, and now there's Jacobus. I don't want them to find you. Listen. Hmm? We'll do what we did in Paris, remember? Yes, yes. I take a taxi to the airport, and I buy a ticket for a flight. Yeah, you do more than that. You take baggage. You check your bags in and see them on the way to the plane. Then you settle down to await the flight, and now you tell me. When the flight is announced, I slip off. I take a taxi back to town, and I come to see you. Correct. At the house at Usa. Yes, David. I'll be with you as soon as I can. I don't think Paul Mayer has been straight with you, Bill. Uh, I didn't think he would be. Uh, this address he gave you is nowhere near the railway line. Mm. It's a very respectable boarding house for elderly ladies. <laughs> but uh, have a look at the map. I think mm. we've found the right district. We checked on trains leaving Amsterdam after 2 a.m. There's one that fits. There was a local goods train on uh, this line, and it was 
just about here at 0245. Given the distance at which you could hear it inside a house, within this circle. Yes, I saw some silhouettes of roofs, low roofs. I might get a feeling about it. <laughs> Let's go there. I'm afraid you've left it a bit late, miss. Oh, I'm sorry. It was the traffic. Um, my ticket. Now, Miss Lowndes to Frankfurt. If you'll put your baggage on the scales, miss. I'll see them aboard the plane. The announcement will be made again soon, but I'm afraid you haven't much time. You should go now to gate seven. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh I am sorry. It's my fault. Here, let me help you. There, your magazines. Thank you. Aren't you the young man who's been following me? Yes, Miss Lawrence. You can tell Mr. Galbraith I'll be giving him no more trouble. I'm going away. I'll tell him. Well, this is the area we marked on the map, Bill. The railway line is over there. Now we search for the house. Dikers for Commissaris. Excuse me, Bill. Commissaris, go ahead, Dikers. Miss Lawrence is at ship hall. She has booked on a flight to Frankfurt, Lufthansa. Oh, wait, Dikers. You heard that, Bill? Frankfurt? Now, that's strange. I've seen her passport. She goes to Belgium, to France. She's never gone to Germany. You think they've taken Gelder so far? Dikers, you're certain it's Frankfurt? Yes, Commissaris. I was at the booking desk. Her baggage has gone aboard. Do I have permission to buy a ticket and follow her? You follow her? Will you follow her as well? No, leave her to Dikers. We find Jacobus. Lufthansa bietet alles Fluggäste der LAH 083 nach Frankfurt zum Flugsteig Nummer 7 zu begeben. Letzter Aufruf, LAH 083. Lufthansa Airlines announced the departure of flight LH083 for Frankfurt. Will all passengers proceed through gate number 7? Boarding now. This is the last call for flight LH083 for Frankfurt. We have now reached the railway, Bill. Seen anything familiar? No, oh, not yet. I had a feeling of more twists and turns and, uh, and lower buildings. Ah. There are narrower streets on the other side. We'll drive across the bridge. Have a look. We made it, David. We're home. In you go. Now, you're safe. I was scared. That young detective followed me. He was watching me at the airport. Then he went off to buy a ticket. Yes, they become careless when they see the baggage go aboard. Where's Gelder? Downstairs. He's locked up, safe and sound. Are you sure? I put special locks on the door. Boats on the outside. I'm still worried about you. Don't worry. Just do what I say and soon we'll be in search of the sun. <laughs> we'll be rich. What do you want me to do? Some typing. But first, make him some food. He hasn't eaten since last night. Mm. Uh, the cupboard's well stocked. You'll find plenty there. Well, what shall I make him? Oh. Uh, meat, eggs, an omelette. Ah, an omelette. And don't spare the eggs. You'll be hungry. Oh, and make one for me and coffee. I think you like him now. Who? Andre Gelder. Well, he's a bit stuffy, but he's a gentleman. He's given no trouble. Has he agreed? Yes. Later, I want you to get in touch with our silly friend, Mrs. Elizabeth Van Drupen. But Betty's in Paris. You can phone her. 
Tell her you'll be seeing her tomorrow. No, 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 don't look so worried. I can get you safely out of the town. What are you going to do with Gelder? When I'm finished, he'll give us no trouble. You're going to kill him? Ask no questions, and you have no bad dreams. David, no, please, please, not murder. Do you want to be rich? Very rich. Line the sun, have a villa, a yacht. No more worries. Yes, Then don't ask questions. You go to Paris and meet Betty. Leave everything to me. I'll join you there. Now watch that on. Oh, yes. Oh, you know, they didn't get Galbraith. He's free. It doesn't matter now. We have Gelder. And all I'm doing is a legal transfer. It'll work. He's impressed. See anything familiar? No, but I have a feeling we're in the right place. Dikes for commissaris. Dikes for commissaris. Oh, excuse me. Lindemans, go ahead. Dikes here, commissaris. The girl did not go on the plane. I checked it out. I'm sorry. I understand. Thank you. That's a pity. So she gave him the slip. Hmm. I'll bet she's still in Amsterdam. Gelder? Yes? <clears throat> How's the food? Excellent. Give my thanks to the cook. Mm. I take it you have a woman in the house. To do the typing? I have the documents ready. Have you finished the letters? Yes. Let's see them. Ah. One to your Dutch banker... One to your Swiss banker. One to Mrs. Van Druten. Hmm. This is very good. I wish, Mrs. Van Druten, to do some business on my behalf. You will remember her as the wife of my late partner, Julius Van Druten. She must be given facilities to draw on the account without further reference. Good. Now... Here are the transfer documents all ready for signing, and you'll address the envelopes in your own handwriting. Of course. Being rich isn't all you think it is. Not when you're working for it, but it is when you're spending it. You should have tried it. Yes, I think I should have. Here you are. Ah. The transfers are signed, the envelopes addressed. You see before you a poor man. What now? Well, when the letters have been delivered, you will have three phone calls to make. To your bankers and to the security guards, telling them that you're on holiday and all is well. And telling them that there must be no delay. And then? When the numbered account has been emptied and the diamonds are in my hands, you can go. I wish I could be so sure. Your good behavior is your best assurance. All right, Mr. Cater. I have to leave it to you. Bill, I've been looking for you. Oh. <clears throat> Meals have been hard to come by. I thought it was time to eat. Ah. Will you have something? Oh, uh, coffee. Waiter, coffee? Yes, sir. We've had a sight of Jacobus. Where? Uh, down by that railway. In the district we searched. Cornelius spotted him and lost him again. It's quite a, a warrant. Uh, your coffee, sir? Oh, I was saying, it's uh, quite a warren of little twisting streets. He caught sight of him and lost him. But he was seen again in Turndorp. Where's that? On the other side of the river. Looking for Cater, I think. He was in a car. Alone? No. He had three companions. Heavies. Looks like the syndicate is in action. And they're touring the streets, <clears throat> slowly. Like they're looking for a house. Cater's house. What can we do? Keep a close watch on Jacobus and hope we get there first. Uh, who is it? Uh, just a moment. Anne-Marie, mm -hmm. your call to Paris. She's there, just coming on the line. I'll leave it to you. Right. 
Hello, Betty. It's Anne-Marie. Surprised? <laughs> yes, I was just checking that you're still in Paris. I'd like to see you. Hold on a minute. David, it's all right. Arrange it for tomorrow. I'll be back in a minute. Zelda. Yes? I found the merry widow. I'll deliver your letter to her tomorrow. I thought you'd like to know. Of course David wants to see you again, Betty. He's looking forward to it. <laughs> Silly. He's just as excited as you are. Well, till tomorrow, then. Bye. Well, it worked. She was almost drooling down the phone. She's still gone on you. What did she say? You mean the gooey bit? No, about taking her to Switzerland. She'll love it. She'll go immediately. Can't wait. Now, you better play it carefully. No hint about you and me. There are things I want her to sign. Haven't I always been careful? I'll be her friend. I'm sure she'll do anything you ask. We've searched this part, Jacobus, street by street. Keep going. We have to find it. Do you know what you're looking for? Before he joined the syndicate, Cater had a house around here. He used to talk about it. It was near the sport park, he said. There is two of them. There's a sport park on the other side by Ustzar. Yeah, well, we'll finish this area first. A tall house, he said, and uh, trees in the street. Oh, there are trees in every street. Keep going. We have to find him. Did you sleep well? Not very well, no. Come upstairs, Gelda. Why? Your letters have been delivered. Now you have to make the phone call, so uh, come carefully. Supper was not so good last night. I take it the woman is no longer with you. She's gone, but the house is barred and bolted, so don't get any ideas. There's the phone. You make three calls. You mention the letters you've written. You tell them you're taking a short holiday, and they must give your instructions immediate attention. And you'll sound businesslike. Of course. Now? Yes. Are you sure you know, Jakobus? Why don't we try the other sport park at Ustzahn? Mm. We'll do that. But first we'll try something else. I'll take over and keep looking for the house. On your own? You three get out and make a search for Kater's car. You know what it's like. Sure. Search all the garages and parking places. It must be parked somewhere, and it may be near the house. If we find it, where do we meet you? If you find it, you put a watch on it, and we meet at the entrance to the sport park. Ah, no, no. There's a pavilion in the park. I'll meet you there. It's all in my letter to you. I'd like you to do it immediately. I'll be gone for a few days. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Three phone calls. Is that how you wanted it? That was very good. Very wise of you. When will I be free? Very soon. There are some things I have to do here and in Zurich. Of course. I have to lock you up in the cellar again. But I'll leave you plenty of food. I don't think you'll risk coming back. If all goes well, I won't come back. But I'll have someone to release you. I have your word. Why not? Lindemann, sir. Spreek maar. Wat is het? Jacobus is gevonden. Bij het paviljoen. In het spoedpark. Hij is dood. Dank je. Well, Bill. Jacobus has been found. Where? By the pavilion in the sportpark. 
It looks like Mr. Helder did have time to buy protection. Jacobus is dead. He was shot. That was episode four of Galbraith and the King of Diamonds with Bernard Hepton in the name part. Tom Watson plays the part of Cater with Peter Dinerly as Gelder, Sidor Shapps as Linda Mance and Eva Haddon as Anne-Marie. Paul was Richard Davis and Trader Faulkner played the parts of Dykers, Otto and another villain, whilst Jacobus, the leader of the syndicate, was played by Stephen Greif. Galbraith is written by Robert Barr and produced by John Browell. Present Galbraith and the King of Diamonds, a serial in six episodes by Robert Barr, with Bernard Hepton, Tom Watson, Cyril Shapps, Peter Dinley, Richard Davis, and Eva Haddon. Episode 5, Appointment in Zurich, in which the King of Diamonds remains in Amsterdam, whilst Galbraith chases the Queen of Hearts. The plot to kidnap and murder the wealthy diamond dealer Andre Gelder had taken an unexpected turn. David Cater, who had planned and carried out the kidnap, had succumbed to dreams of immense wealth and had tricked the syndicate with whom he had promised to share the loot. Emil Jacobus had set out to search for Cater and had been found dead, murdered in daylight in a sport park. By the way, my name is Galbraith, Bill Galbraith, ex-detective. I had been hired to help protect Gelder, the diamond dealer. It's time I had a positive report, Bill. I mean, you were paid to protect Gelder? Not strictly true, but let it pass. And your only lead to him was Jacobus. And now Jacobus is dead. I think he was killed because he was getting too close. He was searching in Ustzan. Uh, do you know any connection between Gelder and Ustzan, or Keter and Ustzan? No. You said uh, Gelder had a plan to protect himself. Well, he wasn't satisfied with the way you were going about it. Are you? Well, of course. So he hired a killer. Now his killer has got rid of my only lead. And I admit he isn't easy to work with. You can say that again. He wouldn't have my protection. He wouldn't have police protection. He was so sure his wealth would buy anything. Now he's in Cater's hands and he'll get himself killed. Has any of his money been touched yet? Any of his checks been cashed? Well, that isn't easy to find out, you see. The Amsterdam police are having a try. Your friend Kurt Lindemans is on to it now. Ah, this whole damn business is so secretive. Trying to get information about uncut diamonds is like trying to get the plans of Fort Knox. I wonder Cater had the nerve... Ah, Kurt. Any luck? It took some time, Bill, but I got it. Our Dutch bankers are so cagey, but it looks like Cater is already at work. Helder has written to his bankers, asking them to move certain funds to a Swiss bank. How much? In pounds, two million and a half. Oh, Cater is aiming high. Uh, Helder also phoned his banker this morning to tell him that he's taking a holiday to explain that the transfer is part of a business deal and that he wants it done immediately, with no questions asked. And they're doing it. Gelder's call. Do we know where it came from? It was a local call. But he's being robbed and you can't stop it? How can we stop it, Mr. Evans? Gelder told his servants he was going on holiday. He's told his bankers the same. 
They have authority for the transfer in his own writing and a phone call in person to confirm it. Who is the money being transferred to? Transferred to his own account in Switzerland, in Zurich. The switch will be done from there. He has a much bigger fortune in diamonds. Has anything been done about them? We can't, Bill. There was also a letter to the uh, security guard at his safety vaults telling them that he was transferring four-fifths of his diamond stocks and a phone call in person confirming it. They say he was in good spirits and talked about taking a holiday. And he said something about uh, a partner. A partner? Yes, Bill. Did he give the name of this partner? No. Well, in money and diamonds, we reckon there must be six or seven million pounds involved. And Cater is trying it on his own. He's not just trying it. He's doing it. Once the money is in Zurich, the Swiss bankers will obey the instructions. They always do. And the diamonds? The same can be said about diamond trade. Uncut diamonds. Helda has authorized the transfer, and it will be done. And when it's done, Cater will kill him. You say the phone calls were local? Yes, but Amsterdam is a big city. I think Jacobus was getting near to the hiding place. He was found dead in Oostzaan. By the pavilion in the sport park. Are there any unoccupied houses there? Or empty buildings where Gelder could be held? A few. We'll have them searched. But I doubt if he's being held in an unoccupied house. At any rate... Now that the money and diamonds have been transferred, Cater will be off. Do you think Gelder is dead? I don't know. But Cater will have no further use for him. Gelder? Yes, Mr. Cable. <clears throat> it is just a matter of the transfer of the diamonds. I have the documents here all typed out, saying that they can be shipped on the signature of your partner. I have no partner. The widow of your late partner. Now sign. There you are. What now? I have to go away for a while. You should be quite comfortable. I'll leave you enough food. When it's over, you... I promise I'll be released. If you behave yourself, and if all goes well. Don't try to shout, you won't be heard. And don't try to break out, you won't make it. I'll have someone keep a check on you. Later, he'll release you. Alive, I hope. Why not? It should all be over in a few days. If not, then you will be dead. Goodbye, Mr. Gelder. We'll make a police search of Ostzan, but to search house by house may take several days. Well, we must do it. But first we must consider every other possibility. Jacobus was our best lead. If he was killed by the man hired by Gelder, then that man is now searching for Cater. Do we have any idea who killed Jacobus? Did anyone see him at the sports park? No. Jacobus had been dead about uh, two hours. He was found by a couple of lads who came to open up the pavilion. So we have an unknown killer looking for Cater. Now, what else do we have? We know Jacobus first met Cater in Paris when Cater joined the syndicate. Have we anything further on that, Tom? No, um, just what's on the Jacobus file. Well, then let's go further back. Cater is being helped by his girlfriend, Anne-Marie. I first met her in London when she was trying to get some money out of you. Well, she wanted the money to break free from Cater? Well, I don't believe that, but let that pass. I saw her at her flat. She had a photograph of Robert Spence, the young diamond courier who was killed. She had photographs of David Cater, but tried to hide them. She was short of money and tried to sell me some names. Do you have a copy of my report, Tom? Hmm? Oh, it's in London, in the office. Well, I could get no, it no, for no, you. No, no, no need to. I'll remember. Uh, she mentioned names, names, names. A young widow in Paris. Van Driffen. Van Druten. 
Does the name Van Druten mean anything? Helder once had a partner named Van Druten. He died some years ago. Uh, Julius Van Druten. He left a young widow. Ah, now we're getting some connections. We've had Paris twice. Cater met Jacobus in Paris. The young widow Van Druten lives in Paris. Kurt, you said Gelder mentioned something about a partner to his banker. His company was once called Helder and Van Druten, but he's owned it himself for years. But the name will still be known in the diamond trade. Oh, yes. Gelder and Van Druten. Now, what was it the girl said to me about the widow? Something about money. Uh, yes, yes, Cater was making a play for the widow and spending her money. Good. You keep looking for Gelder. Tom and I will go to Paris and try and find the widow. And if we do, I think we'll find Cater. I can give you some help, Bill, officially. An introduction to my opposite numbers, the heads of Interpol in Paris and Zurich. Thanks. Yes, I'll write it now. Uh, the chief in Paris is uh, Jean Leclerc. Mm. Uh, the chief in Zurich is uh, Lander. Peter Lander. You'll find him very helpful. Here. Uh, when you see them, give them my best regards. I will. And if you get any trace of Gelder, let us know. Mm. Oh, uh, before you go, uh, Jack Milne has made a good recovery. Do I still look after him? We'll see him before we leave. Bye, Kurt. And thanks. Good luck. You said a holiday, Tom. <laughs> Follow a courier and then have two peaceful days in Amsterdam. I'm sorry, boy, but I really did believe that. I thought I was helping you to the quiet life. I've had a week in Amsterdam, and now we're off to Paris. And I'm sure you'll end up in Zurich. Will you stay with me, Bill? Well? Well, why not? Personal now, is it? Yes. Kitter. I was thinking of Jack Milne. Oh, of course. Look, I'll leave some cash with the land bill for his return home, and I'll, I'll tell him his job is still waiting for him. I'm sure he'll be glad to be out of this one. Out of it? Why? You were asking that. You were the one who wanted to... If he's anything like his old man, Tommy, he won't let you push him out of it. He'll feel he's an account to settle with Mr. Cater. I'd like to test him. Well, we'll see how he is. Hello, Jack. How are you feeling? Quite good. How good? Well, I've been up and about for a couple of days. I've been wondering what happened to you. <laughs> it's a long story. I'll leave you to talk to Mr. Evans, and uh, I'll have a chat with your doctor. Morning, Doctor. Remember me? Galbraith. Oh, yes. You came with Commissaris Lindemans. I've been talking to your patient. He tells me he's been up and about and feels quite well. Oh, he's made a good recovery. We're pleased with him. Is he strong enough to travel? Uh, why? Well, I'm off to France and it looks like he wants to be active. Oh, yes. He's strong enough to travel. I take it this is a holiday. Well, for him... It will be a holiday. <laughs> good, good. A few days rest should see him fully fit again. I'll sign him out and uh, he can go with you now. How does it feel to be free? It's good to see the world again. Like coming out of jail. Uh, more like coming back from the dead. They nearly succeeded in killing you. Ah, <laughs> well, I'm a strong lad. <laughs> Uh, what's been happening? Well, since they took you, or since we found you? Well, I know what happened when they took me. Two men, you said? Yes. Well, we got one of them, Eddie Brent. You identify Cato? Any time. I'd like to get my hands on him. Oh, well, you might. We're looking for him now. Can I help? Ask Mr. Evans. 
He's your boss. How do you feel, lad? Well, I'm all right, sir. Being stuck in that hospital didn't help, but now that I'm back with you, I... The doctor said a rest, boy. A holiday, no more. And Bill here agreed. Where are we going, sir? Paris, looking for a widow named Van Druten and a girl called Anne-Marie Lowens. Have you ever heard that name mentioned? Lowens? No. She's Cater's girlfriend. If we can find the two women, we'll find Cater for you. <laughs> then I don't need a holiday. This widow, Van Druten. She's known to her friends as Betty. Have you heard her name mentioned? No, sir. Betty! Anne Marie, how <laughs> nice to see you come in. Thank you. When did you arrive in Paris? An hour ago. I had a bit of trouble parking the car. Oh, it's quite a trouble, isn't it? Uh, is David with you? No. Oh. But I have a message for you from David. Oh, good. <laughs> Coffee? Mm, I'd love some. Fine, I'll fix it and we can talk. Um, you've got a message from David? Mm. He wants to take you on holiday. Truly? Tomorrow. He wants you to meet him in Zurich. He has rooms booked, everything's laid on. <sighs> he's, uh, he's been missing you, Betty. I think he's in love with you. Then why has he stayed away so long? I don't know. I think he's been busy. Um, can I ask you a question, Anne-Marie? Yes. Are you in love with David? <laughs> well, me? <laughs> oh, good heavens, no. Why do you ask? Oh, it was you who introduced us, and you were very friendly. Then, um, let's just say you cut me out. Oh. I think he's quite mad about you. You're not jealous? No, of course not. I have a boyfriend of my own, and... David is yours. You know, when we meet, he talks about you, talks about no one else. Oh, what does he say? He'll tell you himself tomorrow. In Zurich. Oh, I love Zurich. I must go shopping, buy something special. Will you come and help me? Well, of course I'm your friend. And I love shopping. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is your room, Bilbach. Paris style. Do you approve of it? Well, it's lush, magnificent. What's the catch? Oh, the agency spares no expense when buying experience, and I need yours. Mm. Now, Jack's room is next door, mine is across the corridor. I think I will use this one as our headquarters. Do we eat first, or get down to business? We get down to business. Right, over to you. All right. You own the best investigating agency in London? Yes. You have rich clients like Andre Gelder, and you say you have good connections in Europe? I have. Then, first of all, let's see if Mrs. Van Druten does live in town. The phone directory. Uh, S, S, T, U, V, Van, V. Van Drayton, Dre, Dre, first, Dre. Van Druten. Here it is, Van Druten, Elizabeth. An address in the Avenue Clichy. Very posh. It seems all Gilda's friends are in the money. Give me an hour to look up some contacts. I'll check on her. Check on her friends, her habits, her car registration, her credit. When Anne-Marie was pretending to be on our side, uh, sorry, on your side, she said some nasty things about the widow. A bit bitchy. If Anne-Marie is Cater's girlfriend, I'm not surprised. And if the widow finds her, phew, the fur will fly. Anyway, give me an hour. Sure. Oh, and while I'm gone, have a talk to Jack. He's a good lad and will do anything you ask, but he, well, he lacks your kind of experience. All right. I'll send him in. Come in, Jack. Mr. Evans said you wanted me. Yes, yeah, sure. He said to have a talk. First, I have to apologize for not looking after you at Skipple. Letting you be taken. Oh, I should have been watching for it, sir. It was my own fault. Now, don't call me, sir. Call me Bill. All right. Bill. Now, what did they want of you? They wanted the parcel of diamonds I was carrying for Mr. Gelder. Then they wanted me to phone him and lead him into a trap. You refused? Well, yes. Yes, Bill. So they knocked you out, drove you to Narden, and dumped you in the sea? Yeah. 
filling me up with gin first. Hmm. Kater is playing for very big stakes, and he won't let murder stand in his way. When he has Gelder's fortune, he will kill him too. Kill anyone. So don't try to tackle him alone. I'd just like to get him. Uh, wouldn't we all? Have you seen him? Not yet. I've been expecting someone to lead me to him. You, Jacobus, Anne-Marie, Gelder, and now Mrs. Van Druten. It may not be long. What do you think of it, Anne-Marie? Isn't it lovely? Oh, it looks like it was made for you. Uh, and the hat. Davy won't be able to resist it. Oh, you think so? It's perfect. Suits you. <laughs> I tell you what. What? Let's go to Zurich today and be waiting when David arrives. A surprise. Why not? He'll love that. Come on, then. Let's pack. Anne-Marie? Yes? You said you're my friend. Will you tell me something? Anything. David is such a nice boy, but... But what? Well, he always wants to talk about business, talk about my husband's friends and about diamonds. Do you know why he really wants to see me? It's because you have so many things in common. He trusts you, and that means he needs you. Mm, I think he does. Oh, I can hardly wait. What else should I take? Oh, well, it's always best to travel light. If you need anything, let David choose it when we get to Zurich. In which case, I'm ready. Let's go. Well, have you two had your little talk? Oh, yes, I've been learning a lot about detective work. Well, you couldn't have a better teacher. There was no better detective at the yard than Bill Gerbraith. But he threw it all up because... Oh, what was it uh, because of Noble? I wanted to dig a garden, but we're not here to talk about me. Now, what have you found? Well, I've checked on Mrs. Van Druten, the very wealthy widow. So they say, but rather trusting and very foolish. Getting to be mutton dressed up as lamb, but still very pretty. Hmm. I'm afraid she's in for a shock. Is this speculation or fact? Fact. She has a visitor. From the description, it's uh, Anne-Marie Hotfoot from Amsterdam. They hmm. went shopping together like they were preparing for a holiday. Dresses, cosmetics, and a visit to a beauty salon for Madame Van Druten. Then they went to a travel agency and booked a flight together to Zulia. Looks like the Merry Widow is being set up for a visit from Cater. Oh, I'm sure of it. Now, we uh, we could book on the same plane, but uh, Man Marie knows you, and she knows Jack. Oh, uh, do you want to make a confrontation of it? No, no, no. I want it to be a surprise. We follow them. Oh, I'm sorry you haven't had time to enjoy your lush apartment, but um, I'll see what I can do for you in Switzerland. <laughs> I knew there was a catch in it. Let's get moving. Well, get your bags. I'll find a porter. You all right? Yes, I'm all right. <clears throat> Where is Mr. Cater? I don't know. We don't mention names. Like, you don't ask me who I am, I don't know who you are. And I didn't hear the name you mentioned. I come to see you're all right, I bring food... You say thank you and no more than that, right? So here you are. Jug of fresh water, flask of coffee, enough food for the day, all right? Thank you. Before you leave, do you know who I am? No. My name is Helder, Andre Helder. I'm sure you must have heard of me. If you'll do something for me, I will pay you well. Oh, save your breath. I'll pay you a thousand guilders. Ten thousand guilders. For what? To let me free. No, no. Take a note to a friend. You'll be well paid. If you're going to bother me like this, you'll starve, I warn you. So think about it. No, you eat your food and behave yourself. I'll be back tomorrow. Wait. What is it now? Will you make a phone call for me? Look, mister, it'll be your life or mine. No, thanks. No. Yes. Oh, I can't believe it. We're here. And David actually booked the room. I told you he had. 
Are you pleased with them? Oh, wonderful. Oh, what a lovely view. I do love Zurich. Well, there's a note here. It's addressed to you. It's in David's writing. Oh, which means he's here. Let me have it. Well, what does it say? Oh, he says he has some business to do. He'll see me later. What kind of business? Men always have business to do. And he says that he has business to talk about with me. Why me? Because he relies on you, Betty. He needs you. This afternoon we'll go shopping again and... Oh, who is it? David! Oh, David, you were teasing me. Your letter said that... I you... know what my letter <laughs> said. It was so that I could surprise you. Oh, it's a lovely <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Oh, I haven't seen you for so long, David. I think I'll leave you two together. See you in the morning, Betty. Uh, Anne-Marie? Yes? You'll phone me in the morning. Of course. Bye. Now, we're alone. Is it a holiday, David? Mm. <laughs> we start now. I bought tickets for the ballet tonight. And then I take you to supper. Mm. And tomorrow we go sightseeing. Your letter said business. Mm. There is a little business. It can wait. Do you love me, David? Mm. You know I do. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh, darling. Darling. Oui, monsieur. Uh, je suis Galbraith. Uh, je voudrais voir Monsieur Lander. Is he expecting you, sir? <laughs> yes, I phoned today. Uh, he said I could call. Just one moment, sir. Le Monsieur Galbraith est ici, Monsieur Lander. Oui, monsieur. Mr. Lander is waiting for you, sir. Uh, room 38... Along there to your right. Thank you. Peter Lander? Oh, yes. Come in. Bill Galbraith. I have a letter of introduction from Kurt Lindemans. Oh. He sends his best regards. Mm, Kurt and I are old friends. He telexed me this morning uh, and then phoned, put me in the picture. It seems you have uh, trouble on your hands. Yes. Part of it is an Interpol matter. Part of it's private. That's why I'm here. Some uh, money has been transferred to one of our banks. A very large sum of money. Huh? Two and a half million pounds. Kurt said that it will be done legally under Gelder's signature. If so, we can't stop it. No, but we can stop the criminals. I have two photographs here. Hmm? An Englishman, David Cater, and his girlfriend... Anne Marie Lowens. I believe they are both in Zurich. They may be booked into hotels, probably the best hotels. Can you check? Oh, yes, I'll do that. There's also an innocent woman, uh, Madame Van Druten. Do you know of her? Uh, no, Van oh, Druten. No, well, no. at least we think she's innocent. This caterer's a smooth talker. And she'll be used in making the transfer of the money. Also the transfer of a large stock of diamonds. There isn't much we can do about the money if the transfer documents are in order. Our banks are protected. But we can help you look for these people. We'll give you all the help we can. <laughs> Thanks. We'll uh, check on these two and, uh, and let you know. Did you have any luck, Bill? Well, I saw Peter Lander... Did you tell him about the murder? Jacobus or Spence? Both. Lindemann's told him. But that's Kurt's own affair. So will Gelder's death be if it happens in Amsterdam? Galbraith? Peter Lander, we've checked out the hotels for you. There's no David Cater or Anne-Marie Lowens booked in at uh, any of them. But there is a Madame Van Druten. She's booked in at the Regal, room 357. Thank you. Any time, if you need us. Goodbye. No Cater and no Anne-Marie. The elusive Mr. Cater seems he's always careful. 
and with a fortune within his reach, he's sure to be. But the widow is here. He has to show himself. Why did you stay away so long, David? Tell me, what have you been doing? Well, I've been working for your friend, Mr. Gilder. You haven't? For Andre? Well, why not? We get along very well together. It's just that Andre is so straight-laced, so remote. He doesn't have any friends. And doesn't he? Oh, well, then, let's say he found me useful. He, he asked me to do a bit of business for him. What sort of business? Well, really, he wants you to do some business for him. Me? Why, David? I don't know anything about his affairs. Well, that's why he chose you to help him. I'm just the messenger boy. Oh, David, you said a holiday. Now it's for your friend Andre, and it won't take you a moment. Then we go to the theatre, have supper, and start a holiday. Hmm. What's that? Oh, it's uh, what he asked you to sign for him uh, and take to his bank. Well, it's for the transfer of money, David. And it doesn't say how much. You know, Andre, he doesn't tell anyone his business. It says available funds. You, you just sign it. But why me, David? Your husband was his best friend, Betty. Mm. His partner. The name's still respected in business. Now, look, there's Andre's signature. You recognize it? Yes. Well, all you have to do for him is to sign uh, there. And take it to his bank. Oh, it, it, it frightens me, David. Suppose I made a mistake. You, you can't make a mistake, darling. It's simply a transfer for him of available funds. It might be very little. A transfer from his account in Zurich for a business deal. I, I have a letter from Andre explaining it. Would you like to read it? Yes. Yes. Here it is. Mm. Uh, satisfied? Yes. Ah. So, tonight we go to the ballet. And tomorrow, you take this to his bank. Yes, David. Now, please, mm. forget about business. Come in. It isn't locked. Oh, come in, Peter. Just the man. Now, let me introduce uh, Tommy Evans, Peter Lander, Chief of Interpol, Zurich. Glad to meet you. Thank you sir. And uh, Jack Mill. Pleased to meet you, sir. So, will you uh, will you have a drink with us, Mr. Landard? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Now, what brings you here? Well, we still haven't found your pair at any of our hotels. I came round to see if I could help. Uh, we were just kicking it around. Uh, somewhere in your city, Cater is in touch with Mrs. Van Druten. He's softening her up, getting her to sign a transfer of money in Gelder's name. Now, can we find out where it's being transferred to? Who it's being transferred to? Oh, no. Sorry, uh, we've been in touch with Gelder's bank. Uh, we have a department that deals with this sort of thing. But we have no powers. The bank assures us that it is in order and confidential. Uh, they can give no names. Your drink. Oh. Cheers. Now, we're trying to prevent another murder. And we're trying to prevent a criminal from becoming very wealthy. Now, there's another point. When this money deal is done, there will be a transfer of diamonds worth about four million pounds. So I think Mrs. Van Druten is also in danger. Oh, we have a watch on our hotel. If anyone visits her, we'll let you know. It's getting late, David. Uh, I think I should be getting ready for the theatre. Well, there's loads of time. It'll take me an hour and... Oh, I look such a mess. <sighs> Yes, all right. Oh, uh, Betty, one more thing. Um, Andre asked if you would uh, also sign this. Oh, well, what is it? That was just part of his business deal. He transfers some money, he sells some diamonds. Oh, but again, it doesn't say how much, David. It just says, as arranged. <laughs> you know how he is. He makes his own arrangements. Oh, I'm sure I'll make a mistake. He's so rich. I'd like to speak to him first. Uh, you can try. But he told me he was going on a business trip. I'd still like to speak to him. All right. Do you have his number? No, I haven't. Oh, don't worry. I'll get him for you. 
Yeah, exchange. I want a call to Amsterdam. A personal call to Mr. Andre Gelder. Will you check the number in the directory? And ask him if you'll take a call from Mrs. Van Drucken. Yeah, thank you. Just seeing that you're safe for the night. I have no choice. I'll clear the food away. I told you my name, Helder. I'm not listening. You should listen for your own sake. Cater is going to kill me. Well, then why didn't he do it before he left? My orders are keep you alive. Until he returns. You could be in trouble. Will you take a note to my home? No. To the police? If you know what's good for you, you'll keep the police out of this. Then take a note to my home. My housekeeper will pay you. I'll say you help me. No one can help you, so be quiet and go to bed. Uh, wait! Room 357. Ah, just a moment. It's your call to Andre. Oh, thanks. Hello? Good evening, madame. This is Mr. Helder's housekeeper speaking. Oh, good evening, Hilda. May I speak to Mr. Gelder? Oh, I'm sorry, madame. Mr. Helder's gone on holiday. Do you know where he's gone? No, madame. He just packed and went off. He didn't say where. Do you know when he'll be back? No, madame. Soon, I hope. Uh, have you a message for him? Um, no. Thank you, Hilda. Goodbye. Goodbye, madame. Well? As you said, he's gone away. Yes, he's on this business trip. Satisfied? Yes. So you'll do as he asks and sign. Oh, not now, David. It's getting late and I have to get dressed. Are you staying? I've got to get changed, too. Will you call for well, me? It is late. Look, I'll tell you what. I'll send a car for you and, and, and meet you at the theatre. I'll, I'll be waiting for you. Are you cross with me? No, <laughs> No, of course not. I, I'll be waiting. Bye. We've been keeping a watch on the hotel, but Bill, she did have a visitor. He made a phone call from her room. Do you know where? Yeah, to Amsterdam, to Gelder's home. She then spoke and was told he was on holiday. We didn't catch sight of her visitor arriving or leaving. We sent a maid to her room, but she was alone. He has the luck of the devil. No one has seen him since we got on his trail. The young widow is still at the hotel. I think we'll go there. Well, David, did she do what you asked? No, not yet, Dammer. But she will. Oh, how are you, darling? Impatient. So tell me what happened. Is she still gone on you? <laughs> All the way. Jealous. So long as you don't go too far... Keep it to business. You're mine. <laughs> uh, she's just a bit scared, that's all. Scared of Gelder and of making a mistake. <laughs> she wanted to speak to him. And did she? I put a call through to his home. She was told he was on holiday. Oh. She'll sign. No nice holiday for the widow? No. I think a little disappointment will bring her to heel... You meet her at the theatre. Tell her I've been delayed. Mm -hmm. And when I meet her again and make it up, she'll do what I ask. <laughs> yeah, it's time you were going. A car has called for her and she's on her way down. Do you uh, know her by sight? No. Ah, this is her. Here she comes. Goodness, she's pretty. <laughs> I'd put it higher than that. <laughs> she's rich. Why is it criminals can get the pretty ones? Come on, we'd better get a taxi and follow her. Can you see Cater? Uh, no, but I can see his girlfriend, Anne Marie. Anne Marie, 
Are you joining us? David asked me to meet you, Betty. I have the tickets. He's been delayed. Why? He's trying to trace Andre for you. Isn't that what you wanted? No, I want David. He'll join you as soon as he can. He just asked me to keep you company until he gets here. It's time to go in. Oh, very well. They're going in. No sign of him? We've got to get him tonight or Gelder is dead. From there I've late. We wait. He didn't come. He promised. Oh, he may be waiting for you at the hotel. Oh, he better be. Why is he always doing this to me? He's trying to help you, Betty. You said you wanted to speak to Andre Gelder. Oh, damn Andre Gelder. If David wants me to sign these things, all right, I'll sign them. I bet he's waiting for you. Oh, do you think so? Yes. Let's go. He didn't show up. And here they come. What happens now? Wait for it. Are you coming home with me, Amory? If Dave is waiting for you, uh, do you want me to? No. Bye. Bye. Two women. That is all. No sign of your man. No, and they've split up. Problem. Which one is going to meet him? I would ask which one is no useful to him. It was a man who booked the theater tickets. Your uh, Miss Lerns is still here? Peter, if your men will keep an eye on Mrs. Van Druten and the hotel, I'll look after her. Oh, it's being done. But your one is in no hurry to leave. Is she waiting for him? No, I think she's waiting until the crowd has gone so she can have a look around, make sure she isn't being followed. I'll bet she is the one. I'll see you later, Peter. Right. Well, how was Coppelia? Wonderful. I really <laughs> enjoyed it. Did she miss me? She wasn't too pleased, David. Mm. <laughs> and she expects you to be at the hotel. I told her you'd be there. A ah, little disappointment will do no harm. She'll sulk, she'll cry herself to sleep, and when I see her tomorrow, she'll be pleased and she'll forgive me. She'll sign. <laughs> the trouble with you, David, is that you know women too well. Yes, I also know men. I judged Gelder to a T. When I got him, he was almost eager to hand over his money and his diamond stock. He was impressed, because I'd left nothing to chance. What will you do with him? Oh, don't worry about that. But... Tomorrow it'll be over. We'll be off. A life in the sun. There's Betty. When she knows you've let her down, she'll scream. You think so? I know she will. I'll just leave her to me. Who is it? Room service, sir. Oh, better me. Right. What's he want? It's Galbraith. That was episode five of Galbraith and the King of Diamonds with Bernard Hepton as Galbraith. Tom Watson plays the part of Cater, with Peter Dinley as Gelder and Cyril Schaps as Lindemans. Anne-Marie Lowens as Eva Haddon, 
whilst the merry widow, Betty Van Druten, is played by Francis Jeter. Tom Evans is played by Richard Davis, with Bruce Alexander as Milne, and Peter Hawkins as Lander and the Jailer. Galbraith is written by Robert Barr and produced by John Browell. presents Bernard Hepton in Galbraith and the King of Diamonds, a serial in six parts by Robert Barr, with Tom Watson, Cyril Shapps, Peter Dinley, Richard Davis, and Eva Haddon. Sixth and final episode, The Last Move, in which the ace is played, and we discover the Joker in the pack. At the moment when Cater was about to complete his plans, when he was about to become rich and about to kill the diamond dealer Andre Gelder, I had found him in Zurich. It was a double catch. He was with his girlfriend, Anne-Marie, who had set up most of the planning for him. For me, at last, it was the moment of success. Oh, by the way, my name is Galbraith, Bill Galbraith, ex-detective. I had been hired to find Cater, and here he was. Who is it? It's Galbraith. Come in, Galbraith. How are you, Cater? I think you know my colleague, Jack Milne. You tried to kill him. Milne? No, I don't think I know him. What is it you want? Just you. And you too, Miss Lawrence. No, Miss Lawrence, don't go away. Where is Andre Gelder? You're on the wrong trail, Gobraith. He's many miles from here. And it seems you don't understand the hijack business. We make terms. What terms? Gelder is a hostage, Gobraith. I make terms. It happens that I make two phone calls a day. If I make them, your client Andre Gelder lives. If I don't make them, he may die. If you try to stop me, he will die. So, what is it you want? Just you. I want you for the murder of a diamond courier, Robert Spence. For the attempted murder of Jack here. Uh, he's one of your failures. Oh, one little failure isn't too bad. Uh, there's the attempted murder of me through Jacobus. Another little failure. And for the kidnapping of Andre Gelder. You'll have to find him. No, no. All I have to do is to see that you don't lay a finger on any of his money. So, sit down, Cater. You're going to die poor... In prison. You still think you're the tough copper, but you're not in London now, Gobraith, and I hold a hostage. Well, let's see what your girlfriend thinks. Miss Lowndes. I can still see that he doesn't lay a finger on any of the money or on any of the diamonds. Are you still with him? Why don't you ask Andre Gelder what he wants? He hired you, didn't he? You take his orders. Well, Tom Evans hired me, the man you went to London to see. I was hired only to protect Gelder's wealth. Gelder hired someone else to protect his life. Did you know that, Cater? He had a gunman to deal with Jacobus and to deal with you. He caught up with Jacobus and killed him. Where? In Amsterdam. The gunman killed him in the sport park at Oost Zahn. He was getting quite close to you. David. Right. This gunman is a professional, uh, a contract man. He found Jacobus... Now he's after you. You'll have to be quick. The syndicate's also after you. 
You're not out of the woods. I'm out of this part of it. It wasn't a kidnapping, O'Brate. It was a hijack. There are special rules. We keep a hostage. If the police move, the hostage dies. So get on that phone, phone your Tom Evans, and get your orders. Right. Ask him what his client wants. And I'll tell you what I want. I want two days, two clear days, no interference. And then you can have Gilda alive and safe. Hello? Is that you, Tom? Uh, yes. Uh, what is it, Bill? I have Cater in a small boarding house, and I have Anne-Marie Lones. Oh, that was quick work, Bill. Listen. Cater says he still has Gelder. He talks about a hijack and a hostage. He wants a clear run in two clear days. If he doesn't get it, he says Gelder dies. Are you there, Tom? Yes, I'm here. Go on. Well, that's it. He wants to get clear with the loot. Bill, if he still has Gelder, we have to play along. Why? Because our first job is to save his life. If you don't, it'll be on your own head. When Gelder is free and safe, Bill, you can go after him. That's the way it has to be, boy. What did he say? What are your terms? That I have two clear days to go about... I'm not asking about you. Your terms about Gelder. In two days. That is, in 48 hours from now, Andre Gelder will be released safe and well. I want proof that he is alive, that he can be released. You can have it. How? What time is it? Mm, nearly midnight. Tomorrow morning, Andre Gelder will be given a page from the morning newspaper, complete with tomorrow's date. He'll write a message on it. I am safe and well, Andre Gelder. Hmm? Will that satisfy you that he's alive? If it is tomorrow's newspaper. It will be. And it will be delivered immediately to the police, to your friend, the Commissaris Lindemans. And, Gobraith, yes? if the police make any move to find him, or if you make any move to obstruct me, he will not be safe and well. If we're making a deal, I want your word, Gobraith. I don't give my word to criminals. Your word, or there'll be no message. All right. For two days only. For eight hours. It'll be more than enough. Goodbye, copper. Just a moment, sir. Cater? Yes. Now, oh, easy, easy, lad. What's that for? That's for the one he gave me in the shed, sir. You're right, Cater. Yeah. Forget it. Get going. There's more to come. I'll leave it. Are you all right, David? Sure. It's out of his system now. Now relax and we'll get the time we need. I wasn't risking the money for a punch on the chin. Oh, you're bleeding. You... You wouldn't really kill Gelder, would you? If Gobraith interferes, I'll have to. He knows it. Oh, David. Um, shouldn't you see Betty now and get it over with? Yeah, the, the bank doesn't open until morning. I'll have the money transferred and the diamonds on the move and we'll be away long before we release Gilda. They'll wait for that. Now, get a good night's sleep. We have a lot of travelling to do. Gilda, get up. <coughs> what time is it? <coughs> Seven o'clock. You're early today. What has happened? Well, I've got a job to do, and the sooner it's done, the better. Get up and come to the table. Page from this morning's newspaper. Check the date, will you? It is this morning's. It is. Uh, you've got to write a note on the white space above the date, above the title, just there, to tell your friends you're safe and well this morning. Why? Oh, I don't ask questions. You write, I am still safe and well, and you sign it. Just that and nothing more. Let me have it. There you are. I am still safe and well. Yeah. Andre Helder. Where are you taking it? To the police. They'll call off the search till you're free. Let me have it. What's this about? I don't trust you. If the police call off their search, what happens to me? 
Oh, that's up to you. A deal's been made to save you. <laughs> it's your life. Do what you like with it. All right. Take it. Take it to them. Oh, that's better. Well, I shouldn't be long now. Just another night. It's Galbraith again. Uh, is Mr. Lander in? Yes, sir. He's expecting you. You know his room. 38. Thank you. Oh, morning, Bill. I brought Tom Evans. Oh, come in, Mr. Evans. Oh, uh, take a seat. Oh. What's new? Well, we've come to put our cards on the table, Peter. I got catered last night, but he insists on making a deal. He has a hostage, Gelder. If I touch Cater, he says Gelder will die. Now, if we give him a free run with the money, Gelder will be set free. Oh, it's the hijack game. What's your feeling about it? Well, Tom can answer that one. Mr. Evans? Well, Gelder is my client. He's a very wealthy man. He asked us to protect him. His own instructions to protect his life. You think we should go for Cater? I'm sorely tempted. He's here in your town. Then let me tell you something. I have a message from Kurt Lindemans for you. It was telexed a few minutes ago. He has received a note from Gelder on a page from this morning's Zeitung. Is it genuine? Well, Kurt says it's in Gelder's handwriting. Gelder's secretary confirms it. I believe it was part of your deal. He offered to prove that Gelder was still alive. But it's no proof that he will stay alive. Oh, I don't know what you do in England, Bill, but on the continent we've had quite a lot of this. Bader Meinhof, Palestinians and the rest. As a rule, it's a demand for mm. public money. In your case, it's Gelder's own money. Mr. Gelder is buying his life. You can't interfere. Well, I don't like to see criminals become millionaires. <laughs> Nor do I. Uh, Lander? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Bien, merci. Uh, that was our man who's watching the hotel. He says Cater has just arrived. This time by the front door. <laughs> He's made a deal. He's working in the open now. Let him run. You've no choice. Coming. Morning, Benny. Oh, it's you. <laughs> That's not a very nice welcome. Did you expect one? You stood me up last night. The ballet, you said, and then supper. Where were you? I was doing what you asked, trying to trace Andre Gelder for you. Did you find him? Mm, after a very long time, yes. Where is he? He was in Paris, but now he's on his way south on holiday. He wants to be sure that the money's transferred. And then? Well, I'm free. No more business. We go on holiday. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why, but you always get around me. All right, David, what is it you want me to do? Uh, you just uh, sign this to transfer the mm -hmm. diamonds, and you take this one to the bank. Uh, where do I sign? Uh, no, no, not that one, silly. <laughs> <laughs> you sign that one at the bank. This one. There you are. Will you come with me to the bank? Why not? When we leave, my work will be done. We'll go off together. And I'll never be out of your sight. Do you mean that? Really mean it? Mm. Cross my heart. David, I forgive you. <laughs> you can pack now. Oh, you really are nice to me. I won't be a minute. <laughs> I brought you food. Did you deliver that paper? Yeah, it's been delivered. There we are. Fresh water, flask of coffee, food. Oh, and I brought you a bit of cake. That was kind of you, very thoughtful. Stand just where you are, both of you. Don't move. Who are you? Are you Gelder? Yes. We haven't met, but I'm the protection you hired. You hired me to remove Jacobus and David Cater. Yes, that's so. 
Two days ago, I removed Jacobus. He was searching for you. Are you all right? Yes. Thank you. How did you find me? <laughs> Your jailer was careless. Came here at the same time each day, bringing him food. Took a message to the police. I followed him back. Do I remove him? No. You let him go. That would be foolish, my friend. Best that we lock him up and leave him until later. I have one more job to do for you, Mr. Gelder, to finish the contract. David Cater, do you know where he is? He'll be in Zurich. You should fly there today. Have you any money? Let's lock this one up first. He can eat his own food. Uh, one moment. My coat. I'm most grateful to you, Mr. No names. And you said payment on results. You owe me for Jacobus. And for finding me. I have some money at home. If we can go there... Wait. If this cater knows you're free... If he's already in Zurich, it will make no difference. You must find him quickly and stop him. One thing is important. What is it? I want Cater killed. But no one must know that I hired you. It isn't something we shout from the housetops. Just pay, and no one will know. Thank you. Now we can go home. Well, did she do it? No trouble. Oh. She went to the bank, proved who she is, widow of the late partner of Henri Gelder, showed the letter from Gelder, signed the document. <laughs> Everything is moving. The money transferred and the diamonds on their way. We can leave now. Uh, just one little thing. Oh. Our Madame Van Druten thinks I'm taking her on holiday. Are you? Well, you said she would scream. I have to keep my eye on for the rest of the day. David. I have to get her out of Switzerland, darling, away from Gobraith, and you have to keep away from us. No, David. Not for one day, Anne-Marie. She's waiting downstairs in the car. She thinks I'm packing. Where are you taking her? To France. I'll take her to a quiet place I know in the mountains, a small hotel. In the evening, I'll slip out for a breath of fresh air, and I'll meet you in Dijon. I've done a lot of work for you, David. I want proof. All right. Here's the transfer slip from the bank. I need it to make the next switch. You can keep it for me. Satisfied? Yes. Ah, good. We meet in Dijon tonight. Fly to Madrid, switch the cash again, fly to South America. We are safe, and the diamonds follow. David. Yes. I'm jealous. I know she's quite mad about you. Look, you promised me. I you... leave her this evening. I meet you tonight. After that, we're together. It's the high life. I'll trust you. Be good. You can bet on it. Where are we going, darling? I was thinking, back to France. I know a little place in the mountains, uh, a little hotel. Secluded, quiet. Would you like that? Oh, I'd love it. For how long? Ooh, for as long as you want. That would be forever. <laughs> if you like. Why not? Do you mean that? I don't know anyone I love more. Oh, after the holiday, where will we live? Wherever you say. Paris, Nice. Oh, Paris in the spring, <laughs> Nice in the summer, and, and sometimes we'll go to Zurich to remember. Oh, you're being romantic. <laughs> of course. David? Yes? That work you were doing for André Gelder? It's, uh, finished now. <laughs> we're on holiday. Forty-eight hours I gave him. The clock is ticking on, Bill. It was forty-eight hours from last night. It's now, let's see, um, thirty-two to go. And what has he done in that time? He's taken her to the bank. The job is on. The diamonds are being moved. By tonight it will be too late. And he'll still have a day in hand. Time moves on, but he can't run far. He's taking the woman out of the country. Out of our way. And well, what did you expect, boy? 
I mean, you said he was a good planner, he was clever and ruthless. She's a witness, Tom. He's taking her away. He's heading for France. How do you know that? Because I don't keep deals with crooks. Jack Milne is following them. Then I hope to God he keeps out of their sight. Monsieur? Uh, my name is Kate, sir. I believe you're expecting me. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, just a moment. Room 15. Ah. Uh, what time's dinner? Oh, we're rather quiet at the moment, sir. You can make your own time. Nine o'clock? Uh, yes, sir. I'll have your luggage sent up. Good. Like it? Oh, a view of the lake, David. Isn't it pretty? In the morning, it's much better. You can see little islands. In the distance, the hills. We can go for long walks in the forest. Oh, we'll make it last forever. Mm. <laughs> Dinner at nine. I'll see the chef and order something special. And champagne. Lovely, lovely champagne. Lovely, lovely, David. <laughs> oh, you are good to me. Mr. Helder. Come in, Commissaris. <clears throat> we have been searching for you. So I understand. My servants say you were here some days ago. We were told you had been kidnapped, sir. I am here, Commissaris. There is no question of kidnapping. What has happened to the man Cato I complained about? So far as we know, he's in Switzerland. I'm told that a very large sum of money was transferred to your Swiss bank. Was it transferred for Cater? No, it was transferred to my own account. I'm asking you about this man who is threatening me. Mr. Helder, I will ask the questions, and I expect you to answer them. We know you were kidnapped. I was taken from this house for the purposes of a talk, that is all. We have a message in your own handwriting, assuring the police that you were safe and well. Will you explain, please? It's all right. I was held for longer than I expected, and I wrote that I was safe and well. I managed to get free. From where? From a house somewhere in the Ostsan. The address of the house, please. I don't know the address. Did Cater free you? No. We have a message that he offered to free you. He did not free me. I'm asking you where he is. <laughs> An important question, Mr. Helder. You told Mr. Evans you were hiring a gunman to protect you. Mr. Evans is mistaken. I hired him to protect me. A man named Emil Jacobus was also threatening you. He was shot in Ostsan. I did not hire a gunman. We have discussed all this before, Commissaris. I told you my life was threatened. I had to buy my life with my own money because you did nothing to help me, nor did your friend Gilbraith. I want to know what you have been doing. Was the money sent to Zurich? Yes, to my own account. Is there anything that can be done to stop the transfer? No. I phoned Zurich. The transfer has been done. Is Cater still in Zurich? No. But you know where he is. Mr. Helder, when we first met... You promised you would cooperate. I placed you under police protection, but you ignored it. Yeah, very well. I will cooperate. What is it you want to know? A telex from Amsterdam, from Kurt Lindemans. He says Gelder is free. Does he say how? Uh, just a minute, uh, he claims he got free by himself. He's uncooperative. He's demanding to know the whereabouts of Cater. End of message. Well, Bill, mm. your hostage is free. The deal is off and you uh, have a day in hand. Do you know where Cater is? Yes. 
Do we tell Amsterdam? No. Gelder has a very good reason for wanting to know. But I'll tell you. He's in France. He has Mrs. Van Druten with him. If we're not careful, she could be another hostage. But why can't we tell Kurt? Because Gelder hired a gunman to kill Kater. Oui, monsieur. I believe you have a guest staying here, David Kater. Yes, sir. I'd like to see him. He has just gone out, sir. Did he say where? He said he was taking a walk before dinner. You've only just missed him. He should be back soon. Thank you. Uh, shall I say who called? No need. I'll find him. Kata? Yes? Going somewhere? Why? What the hell's it to do with you? I'm from Gelda. Get out. Peter! Milne to Galbraith. Are you receiving me? Milne to Galbraith. Yes, I'm receiving you. Anything happened? Kater and the woman put up at a hotel here. A stranger arrived and he found Kater. Kater tried to drive off and the man shot him. Did he kill him? No. The car crashed and Kater ran into the forest. The stranger is searching for him. Jack. Yes, sir? Don't get mixed up in it. Get Mrs. Van Druten and keep her safe until we get there. Yes, sir. Looks like the gunman has caught up with Kater. Do we leave it like that? No. This is where you spend some of your money, Tom. We're halfway there. Can you afford a helicopter? Well, if we save Gelder's money, I can. I'll take a look at the map. I think there's an airfield about two miles ahead. More like three miles. You take the first main road on the left. Come in. Madame Van Ruten? Yes. You're waiting for someone. I'm waiting for my... for my friends. I don't think David Cater will be back. What do you mean? Who are you? My name is Milne. I'm sorry, but your friend has tried to leave you. No, I, I don't believe you. Did you hear a shot just now? And a crash. God, no. Is David hurt? I think he is. He's out there in the forest. Oh, my God. Let me go. Leave me. Leave me, I tell you. He needs me. Come back. Mrs. Van Druten, you'll be killed. Come back. Kater? Where are you, Kater? I'm getting closer to you. David! Where are you, David? David, where are you? Tell her, Kater. Tell her where you are. David! David, are you hurt, darling? Are you hurt, Kater? Did I wing you? If you don't want her, Kater, tell her to go. David! David, where are you? Mrs. Van Druten? No, sir. She ran off. She's in the forest looking for Kater. 
Is the gunman in there as well? Yes, sir, and he's calling for Cater. I could hear them moving around. We need the woman. Is there any chance of getting her out? Well, it's quite dark in there, sir. And that bloke's pretty quick to shoot. Wait here. I'll have a look. Cater! This is Galbraith! Send the woman out! We had a deal, Galbraith! Gelder is free! The deal is off! Ask the man who's shooting at you! That's right, Cater! I found Gelder! Now I'm after you! Tell the woman to come out! Too late, Galbraith! She's here! I said she's here. If you want her back safely... When morning comes, we'll find you. When morning comes, I won't be here. Neither will she. He's holed up in the forest and he has the woman as hostage, just as I feared. When daylight comes... When daylight comes, he'll be gone. Have you looked at the map? That forest stretches right down the valley for miles. He has plenty of cover. Well, let's hope the gunman keeps him pinned down until the morning. Now, I think we should have a council of war. Jack? Yes, sir? You say this man took two shots at the car. As it was driving away. When Cater ran off, he was limping. The way he's moving around in the woods, I don't think he was hit. Did you get the baggage? Yes, sir. It's here. Um, excuse me, monsieur. Yes? The kitchen is closing. If there's something you'd like... Um, Tom? I'd like a drink. If you'd leave out a bottle and some glasses, uh, cognac and some sandwiches. Mais oui, d'accord. Well, there's only clothing in her bag. There's only clothing in Cater's bag. There's no documents. He must have them with him. Do we wait until morning? We wait until we've eaten, and then we go down and keep a listening watch. It's a million to one against finding them in the dark. The sandwiches and your cognac. Thank you. Du tout. Bonne nuit. David? Yes? Why are these people after you? There's no time for explanations. What are you going to do? You go back to the hotel. Go on, now. No, David. If he hears me, that man will think it's you and shoot at me. Then come with me. Now? No. We wait. Listen. We go now. Very quietly. You search the bed. I'll do the dressing table. That telex from Linderman was not very helpful. Your client was still being difficult. He wants to get rid of Kater before he touches the money. And if I can find that gunman, Gelder will have to answer for it. If you can find him. Well, there's nothing here. The room is clean. He must have the papers on him. Let's find Jack. Why can't we have a nice bright moon? Jack! Over here. Have you heard anything? No, sir. Cater! Cater! Can you hear me? It's been quiet for an hour, sir. Looks like he's moved off. Yes. Rest here for a while. I think we've given him a slip. Well, we're near the lake. Uh, um, yes, I, I can see it through the trees. It's just down there. Good. I know there are some boats on the shore. We can get away from here. Can I come with you, David? You are coming, uh, and you're doing what I tell you. There's no need to be angry, David. I came to help you. And keep still. Now shut up and listen. It's quiet. There's no one following. Good. We can make a run for the beach. Come on. 
Wait for me, David. Come on. David! Oh, David, you hurt. Yes. Leave him there, lady. Go away from him. Can you help me to, to help me to sit up? <laughs> For God's sake, leave me. Go away. No, David, you, you, you're hurt. Uh, who's this man? Why did he shoot at you? As you, you said, Andrew Kelder doesn't make friends. Did Andre... David... David, speak to me. Will, will you tell Anne Marie that David David Leave him, lady. Just go away and leave him. Did you hear that shot? It was from that direction, west of us. Yes, come on, quickly. I can Can you help him? Please. Tom, look after her, will you? I'll get her back to the hotel. Sure. Uh, will you come with me, Mrs. Van Druten, please? How is he? He's dead. Jack, that boat. The gunman. Mrs. Van Druten, your friend Keta was a criminal. Did you know that? No. Um, can I have a drink, please? Oh, yes, of course. Here you are. Thank you. I'm sorry, but he was going off to meet Anne-Marie. She's his partner. Did you know that? No. They were tricking you. Now, what happened at the bank? Um, he gave me papers. They were signed by Andre. I, I was to sign my name. It was a transfer of money. Did you know where it was being sent? I didn't say. It was for two and a half million pounds. Oh, my God. There was another paper about diamonds. Did you sign that one? Yes. I gave that one to David. I searched his clothing. There were no papers. Uh, did he say anything before he died? Uh, he said... Andre didn't make friends, and he said, Tell Anne Marie. Tell her what? That was all. Just tell Anne Marie. Ah. Now, Gilda's not out of the woods yet, Tom. Anne Marie has got the transfers, she inherits the lot. Your brief again. Commissary Slindermans is waiting for you in there. Thank you. Ah, come in, Bill. I hear you've been busy. Cater is dead? Yes, Jacobus is dead and Cater is dead. We never caught sight of the gunman, so there's nothing we can do about Gelder. Yes, there's one small thing... In the house where Helder was held, we found a man locked up who says Helder thanked the gunman, and they went off together. Can you use that against him? No. Oh, the man has a record no one would take his word against Helder, but it will go on the file. Finished, is it? No. He may still lose his money. The cash and the diamonds have been transferred, and the girlfriend, Anne-Marie, has control. <laughs> I have news for you. Peter Landers has been on. 
Passport control says the girl flew to London. Oh, oh. Well, it looks like the round trip. Back home again to find her. Well, thanks for everything, Coach. It was a pleasure. Come any time. <laughs> but next time, make it a real holiday. Huh? <laughs> and you said you'd be away for only two days. Well, it was Tom Evans who said only two days. A quiet little holiday, he said. Now, come on, Tom, I have a bossy sister to deal with. Tell her. I'm afraid it took a little longer, Mary. A little longer. He resigns from the yard to have a quiet life. What happens? He's in Holland and Switzerland. He's in France. Jack Mill is almost killed. I'm taken for a ride by gangsters. Cater is killed. And Tom says it took a little longer. Hmm. Well, now eat up before it gets cold. Our arrangement with Gelder was to save his money. To save his life? No. He saved that. His money. I can do without you, Mr. Gelder. I hope Anne-Marie is very rich. I'll get it. She won't be rich, you know. The trouble with people like Gelder is that they can buy protection. They never give up. They can buy power, and I don't like it. And neither do I. It's for you, Tom. Oh. oh. I cooked that specially for you, Bill Galbraith. So eat up. If you're going to stay here and dig the garden, you don't waste food. It was Jack Mill. He's traced Anne Marie. Where? In a flat in Chelsea. You'd better finish the job. He'd better finish his dinner. Yes, sister. Good evening. Anne-Marie. Oh, you. I thought you were in France. Well, I was. Can I come in? Can I stop you? David Cater is dead. Did you know? Yes. You've had a lot of hard work and danger for nothing. He left you some papers about money and diamonds. What are you going to do about it? It's not what I will do. I'm not a policeman anymore. It's what Gelder will do to you if he doesn't get them back. Now, be sensible. The papers. Oh, I don't know how to handle them anyway. It was David who knew. I'll get them. Well, thanks. It was a lot of wealth. Seven million pounds. Were you looking forward to it? No. David never really had a chance. Well, he almost did it. But he was caught two ways between Gelder and the syndicate. And you? Ah, well. What now? Well, Cater's dead. I'll forget you tried to set me up. I'll tell Gelder you returned the papers. But you should keep out of his way. Go home. Galbraith? Yes? The first time I met you... I liked you. Hmm. Well, uh, good night, Miss Lawrence. Good night, Galbraith. You told her to go home? Well, why not? You have the papers. Give Gelder his money back. It's finished. <sighs> well, I have another job for you, Bill. Oh, no. No, thank you very much. Oh, it's just your style, boy. Oh, in the Caribbean, a few days in the sun, all expenses paid. Oh, Hanol, it'll be like a holiday. That was the sixth and final episode of Galbraith and the King of Diamonds. The name part of Galbraith was played by Bernard Hepton. His friend, Tom Evans, by Richard Davis. His enemy, David Cater, by Tom Watson. And the King of Diamonds, Andre Gelder, by Peter Dinley. Court Lindemans of Interpol Amsterdam was played by Cyril Shapps. Eva Haddon played Anne-Marie Lowens, the frightened lady who began the story, and the sad, merry widow, Betty Van Druten, 
was played by Francis Jeter. The Gunman was played by Robert Gillespie, Peter Lander by Peter Hawkins, Mary Galbraith by Catherine Page, and the ever-faithful Milne by Bruce Alexander. Galbraith is written by Robert Barr and produced by John Browell.